It was your time and your team. I was in New England for nine years. I'm the all-time leading passer in that organization. But then a twist of fate. Turns of fortune. I don't even pretend to not want to be linked with the Patriots. A change. A new quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. Another chance to make certain they remember what you meant to them. I compare it to competing against your brother. And how much winning means to you. We take the field, man. It's no holds barred. What's done is done, but still left undone is this one. Take it on. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. Drew Bledsoe was the first overall pick by the Patriots in the 93 draft, and after nine years and multiple records, he was traded to Buffalo, making way for a lowly six-round pick. A kid named Tom Brady, who now owns two Super Bowl rings and a pair of Super Bowl MVP trophies. And Tom Brady is one of the few marquee names on a great football team. The key is their versatility. And last week was the perfect example. You have linebackers catching touchdown passes, place kickers throwing touchdown passes, wide receivers playing in the secondary. This is the ultimate team, and they are 7-1. and one. The Bills thought they would be a lot better at the halfway point. They have won three of their last four. And, Joe, one of the reasons for that is that Drew Bledsoe has really stepped up his game. And, Michael, it could not have come at a better time because this game is not just another football game for Drew Bledsoe. This game is personal. As a matter of fact, when the schedule comes out in the offseason, he circles this date as the date that he looks forward to. And he's playing very well right now. Drew Bledsoe, as a matter of fact, hasn't been sacked nor thrown an interception in the last two games. But he's getting some key support from Willis McGahee. Here's a young man who's recovered from surgery in a fabulous way. He's added outside running attack, and he's really, really helped this ball club get back on track. The thing about Willis McGahee, though, is here's a guy in his last three starts who's rushed for 100 yards in each of them. And I'll tell you, Mike, he's going to need every one of those tonight if the Bills have a chance. All right, thanks, Joe. Bledsoe has all, always put up big numbers, and while Tom Brady can't claim those gaudy statistics, he may have the best one. Paul, he's won 22 of his last 23 games. Michael, make no mistake, Tom Brady is the leader of this football team. In fact, his football players call him Mr. Wonderful. We had a chance the other day to sit down with Mr. Wonderful and ask him about this great Bills defense. He says the thing about him is they don't give you many opportunities, so I have to take advantage of all the ones that they give me. He's also going to get help from a guy who I think is the best acquisition that the Pats have made in years, and that's running back Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon is big, fast, and strong. But watch what he does tonight. Watch the yardage that he gains after contact. If Corey Dillon controls the offense, it opens it up for Mr. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. When we come back, Susie Culver on some of the unique ways the Patriot team finds the win. Here's tonight's American Express game plan. Bills running back Willis McGahee has started three games this season and rushed for over 100 yards in each of them. All Bills victories. Corey Dillon has started seven times this season, averaging over 100 yards. All Patriots victories. And welcome back to Foxborough, where Patriots fans have learned you never know what's up Bill Belichick's sleeve. Trick plays, guys playing both ways. It's all about resiliency. Injuries couldn't prevent them from winning the Super Bowl, and it can't stop them from starting a season 7-1. and one. It's the power of preparation. Last week's game, the perfect example of that. Linebacker Mike Vrabel catches the first touchdown pass. He was playing tight end. And with their top three corners out, wide receiver Troy Brown, number 80, more than held his own on defense. Talk about foresight. He's been practicing that since training camp. Even kicker Adam Benateri threw a touchdown. So where does that leave the real QB? It's really about doing anything you can to help the team win. So many, so many guys who can dress for the game. But if you're dressed, you better be prepared to play just about anywhere. <laughs> What's next for you? <laughs> Hopefully, 
the only place you see me is behind center. Because if you ever see me on defense, we are all in a lot of trouble. Brady, as close as you'll come to finding a star on this team that prides itself on having none. It's about equal treatment, playing together as a team. Mike, that's their strength. Thank you, Susie. And ESPN presents Visa Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Visa Skycam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve. And we're excited to bring it to you every Sunday night. When we come back, it's the 90th meeting between the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Big game for these clubs in the AFC East. New England continues to lead the Jets. Two games back in the loss column. Buffalo trying to get to within one game of 500 and trying to avoid the season sweep by New England. Adam Vinatieri against the Rams last week. Only the second player in NFL history with a touchdown pass and four field goals in the same game. The other one was more of a quarterback, George Blanda, than he was a kicker, although he was an outstanding kicker as well. And Vinatieri will get this one started. Kicking to Terrence McGee, who is averaging over 27 yards a return and has two touchdowns this year on kickoff returns. That leads the NFL. Very colorful scene here at Gillette Stadium for their 111 consecutive sellout, and we are underway in New England. McGee on the run, and he will take a knee. Big changes this year on the Bills' offensive line, and they've gotten better. Chris Valerio was a big addition from Chicago. Eric Bolds was a three-time Pro Bowler and having another All-Star season with 47 catches, eight in the NFL. And Willis McGay, he has been worth waiting for. Three starts. Three games over 100 yards rushing for last year's first round pick. Well, let me just say what happened while you were giving it. Terrence well, McGee catches it. Yeah, well, you were away talking. <laughs> Terrence McGee caught the kickoff on the one yard line, Michael, and ran it into the end zone. So they're mark marking the ball at the one. That's where the Bills have to go 99 yards. They're saying that it was not his momentum that carried him in, but that, he, see, right now they're saying that he could have turned around and brought this out. I don't understand it because it looks like to me he caught it and knelt down. But evidently, if he catches it outside, he can't go back in. They threw the Bills tried to throw the they did they threw the red flag in. They're challenging this, and they are going to give them the challenge. I believe officials waving their arms, and Keith Trailer came across. There is no play. There's a red flag for a challenge thrown before the ball was snapped. Along the sidelines, London Fletcher ran down and tackled somebody and said, hey, we got a flag on the field. Well, I also think Mike Malarkey wants an explanation. He wants the officials, Tom White, to explain to him why it's going to be their ball on the one as opposed to the 20. All right. Now, if Buffalo this... is challenged and rolling on the field that he did not have possession prior to going into the end zone. Now, if this were an interception, this I do know. With him catching the ball on the one and running into the end zone, the ball would come back to the one-yard line. It's going to be the same with the kick because you heard the explanation. The possession occurred out of the end zone. But he didn't have total uh, possession you know, of the ball as he was going in. Don't get me well, started this early. We'll check it and we'll be back in a second. <laughs> We've, this game's already been going on 10 minutes. We've played six seconds. They are still waiting to decide the challenge. The opening kickoff taken at the one-yard line by Terrence McGee. He goes into the end zone and take a knee. Look where he gets possession. Outside the goal line at the one. He takes a knee. After reviewing the play, when he received the ball, possession of it, he had one foot down, the second foot, Hits in the end zone. 
therefore it's not momentum. It's a touchback. It'll be a first down at the 20 yard line. Please reset. The replay we just showed shows him having possession outside the goal line, didn't it? But, but the thing about it is, though, he does not tuck the ball away and makes a football move until he's in the end zone. I guess the question is, what do you consider possession? Or a football move. Tom White <laughs> said one foot was down. But the other thing, he knelt down. That's correct. In the end zone. Well, let's get another play. Let's get started. That would be wonderful. Fell on the ground with McGay and McGay gets it up to the 24 yard line. Richard Seymour is the Patriots leader up front on defense, the top man in tackles and sacks for the down line. Teddy Bruschi heads a versatile group of linebackers. He has always made big plays from the inside of the 34. And the Patriots are almost out of corners. Randall Gay is an undrafted free agent who was a nickelback last year. A nickelback for LSU. Bledsoe to throw, and he has the completion up to Eric Moulds for a first down, and Teddy Bruschi makes the tackle. And this has been the biggest difference that I have seen when I've looked at film of Drew Bledsoe in the last couple of weeks. Getting back, not holding on to the football, but being very decisive with it. No interceptions, no sacks over the last two weeks. You see on that play, his offensive line gives him time. He doesn't hold it long. He gets it out of his hand. He's got to do it all night. McGahee. The thing that has impressed the Bills with McGahee coming back off of that injury as Warren makes the tackle is his strength. They knew how quick he was. They knew what a burst he had. But he runs through people as well as around people. The one thing about him, though, that between he and Travis Henry, Travis Henry is that straight-ahead runner that one, two, three, two yards, sometimes breaks it for eight to ten. But on McGahee, he's a, he's a game-breaker. He's a guy that can go the distance. Moles is the motion man. Four-man rush, plugs out a throw, dumps it off, Moles, 40, 45, and knocked out of bounds near the 49-yard line. A gain of 16, Earthwind Moreland knocked him out of bounds. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about Drew Bledsoe getting it out in rhythm. Count the steps. One, two, three, four, five, little hop forward, ball out of your hand. That's, what, that's the rhythm that he has to keep, and that is the goal of New England's defense, is to try and make him hold the ball longer. How can Eric Moulds run free in the middle of that defense? New secondary. I don't care. He's the guy who throws the ball to most of the time. Delay. Looked like the McGay. He wanted to toss the ball back to Bledsoe. Instead, he takes off and got an unbelievable block from Eric Moulds on Teddy Bruschi. Well, Holy cow. This was going to be the pitchback, but watch what happens. They tackle Bledsoe. And McGay, he knows he cannot throw the ball back to him, so he just takes off running. And there's, there's a block by Eric Moulds. Take a look. He's going to throw back. Now, he already sees it, that Bledsoe's in trouble. So McGay, he kept, keeps it. Look at on Bruschi. It's Eric Moles, the wide receiver. I thought only Heinz Ward did that. Uh, Eric Moles is another one that can bring the hammer, too. Boy, he unloaded on a 250-pound linebacker and drilled him. McGay, he again, picking his way, doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Vrabel makes the tackle. McGahee's college career at Miami ended when he suffered a knee injury in that national championship game against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. Then he had to endure a year and a half rehab program after the injury. The Bills, in spite of the injury, selected him with the 23rd overall pick in last year's NFL draft, a move criticized by a lot of people, but a move that is now paying off for this club. The Bills actually have four tight ends in the game right now. And McGahee, little stutter step, picks up a couple. 
For more on McGahee, here's Susie. Well, I talked to his running back coach, Eric Studsville, before the game. He said he just can't believe the confidence, how it continues to grow. You see that natural ability to outrun and run through. But he was especially impressed with the way he makes adjustments during the game. You just saw that two plays ago. The only thing he's still working on, picking up the blitz. Little ways to go on that. But when he gets in a jam, he knows how to get out of it. Breaking tackles. All right, Susie, third and eight here, opening drive for the Buffalo Bills. Bledsoe back to throw, hesitates, and then throws complete to the 34-yard line. Tim Ewis, the rookie tight end out of Oregon State, made the catch. They'll be about four yards shy of a first down. See, and I don't think I think that down in distance, the third and eights, the third and nines, the third and twelves, is what Buffalo has to keep themselves out of. It's important that Willis McGahee or short passing get you some yards on first and ten. And a very conservative call here as Brian Mormon will come on to punt and not Ryan Lindell to attempt the field goal, and they don't go for it. So if there are three options. They take the most conservative, kick it down to the 10. It is a 24-yard kick. 86 years of frustration for New England came to an end this October when the Red Sox won their first World Series since 1918. And there's Kurt Schilling, who was so brilliant and showed so much courage limps out on that surgically repaired right ankle. Joe, you know, do you know how hard that was, was for Mike to say all that? <laughs> Mike, that's very gracious. No, it was. I, I'm a yeah. Cardinal fan. I've yeah. always admitted that, but they were they were unbelievably brilliant, and they earned every bit of it. And yeah. every one of them contributed. I mean, it's, it's the way things have been up here in New England, whether it's the Bo Sox doing it or whether it's the Pats. Patriots will take over at their own 10. Toss back to Corey Dillon. Dillon turns the corner. The Pats offensive line has a couple of new starters. Former NCAA wrestling champion Stephen Neal has taken over as right guard. Halfway through the season, David Givens already has career highs in catches and yards and has three straight 100-yard games. Corey Dillon thrilled with the chance to play here. He's on a pace for a career high and a franchise rushing record. Have you ever seen anybody happier than Corey Dillon? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell him. Tickle. Dillon again and dives forward. Let's see where they mark his momentum. It'll be up around the 15-yard line. Paul, you're absolutely right. When we met with him on Friday, he came in with a smile across his face. No matter what we asked him, no matter what we reminded him of that had gone wrong in Cincinnati, he just sat there and smiled and says, I've escaped, I'm here, I'm <laughs> delighted. And everybody felt that he was a disgruntled individual. They thought he might be a problem. He said, look, if you're looking for me to be a problem, forget it. It's not going to happen. I'm just delighted to be a part of this ball club and have a chance to win. Troy Brown is in as a wide receiver on third and five. Brady, play action. Throws. Brown makes the catch across the 20 yard line and he'll have a first down. Tom Brady has really established himself. This is to me, you know, you can argue, I think he's the best quarterback in football. And the reason I say that is because he doesn't get a chance to throw 35, 40 passes. Throws like that coming on third and five. He's got to keep moving chains. Plus, he's a great deep thrower. Dylan takes it outside. Big guy with a lot of speed down the sideline and shoved out of bounds in Buffalo territory. Dan Copen, the center, got out in front through a great block. A run of 30 yards. And that's exactly why Corey Dillon was brought here. Antoine Smith, they felt like, could not give him this kind of outside burst. Now look what happens when he gets down the corner. Takeo Spikes finally runs him out of bounds once he gets downfield. I'll tell you, Copen just leveled Lawyer Malloy. Lawyer Malloy was in, coming in on a blitz, and he just took him out, and when he did, Corey Dillon was wide open going down the sideline. Boy, this is where you got to be careful of them taking a shot. And Patrick passed through a heck of a block as well. Brady throws out. 
and David Givens went in. That tough Bills defense gets an excellent speed rush from Aaron Schobel. He has five and a half of the team's 18 sacks. The club's leading tackler, middle linebacker, London Fletcher. He is number one for the third year in a row. And Lawyer Malloy has added some toughness coming back from a broken arm. He was a four-time pro bowler when he played with New England. Second and ten for Brady. And Brady gives off the Falk. Falk inside the 40 to the 35. Drag down from behind. It's another first down, this time from Kevin Falk. Well, I'll tell you, Kevin Falk makes a great move inside, and London Fletcher, number 59, is going to miss the tackle right here. Look at him. He misses the tackle. Excuse me, it wasn't London Fletcher. It was number 24, Terrence McGee, but London Fletcher was in the hole. Misses the tackle there. McGee misses the tackle. And Falk, you talk about running ability. That's how tough a guy is. 5'8", 200 pounds. There's nothing to hit. He's on the ground already. <laughs> Brady State straight back, plenty of protection. Falk underneath to the 28-yard line. Falk is normally their third down back, very adept at that. Did you see Brady? I mean, you, yeah. you sit there and watch him sit in that pocket. That's confidence in your offensive line. Well, and he and he feels pressure. You can't see it. You just have to feel it. Watch this. Watch Brady sit back here. Now, he turns his back to the line, into the defense. Now, watch him sit, 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 and wait. He knows he's going to have blocking, steps up, and hits Falk. Gain of seven, second and three. Brady out in the flat. That's complete for a first down to Weaver. He is the number three tight end. And there's something that's unusual for this football team. Other than Mike Babel catching a touchdown pass last week. Okay, the tight ends have not caught passes. Daniel Graham has gone two games without catching it. Christian Fourier went five games, so now the tight ends are back as a part of New England's offense. And Jed Weaver catches one every two months, whether he needs it or not. <laughs> Dylan falls forward to about the 16-yard line. Lawyer Malloy came up to finish him off. Did you look at that time? They went up in the middle of the defense because Sam Adams was out, Pat Williams was out. They got the backup guys in there. <laughs> They'll test them a little bit. But you really don't want to run against Sam Adams 95 and Pat Williams 93 in the middle. But what they're doing is they're starting one way or the other and cutting it back up the middle. So you're getting the big guys to move. The mountains are moving. And then you run back between the valleys. Three wide receivers. Troy Brown in the ballgame. Dylan on the draw. A gaping hole that time inside the 10-yard line. Lawyer Malloy had to make that stop. Andrewsy, Copen, and Neal. Just take a look at the middle of the line. Here's the draw. They set it up perfectly. The linemen get excellent blocks, and then you got a safety. That's Lawyer Malloy coming up to make the play, but Dylan already picked up seven yards on the play. Look at Dylan. He knows where Lawyer Malloy is. That's and, a that's a protect the ball. That's a big key too for offensive linemen. When you're blocking like that, you have to stay up. You don't want to get low. You don't want to get on the ground. Give the running back something to look at and a place to go. And the Bills trying to get a timeout, and they do. You knew well, who else had some great quickness on that last play? Jim Quirk, the umpire. That play came right at him, and he got out of there in a heartbeat. <laughs> we'll be back to New England in a moment. Bill Belichick, a two-time Super Bowl winner with the New England Patriots, and the rookie head coach, Mike Malarkey, for the Buffalo Bills. Hoping that his defense can handle this drive and stop it inside the 10. And Corey Dillon maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You kick the field goal here. They don't even hesitate. And they take their time making the decision. And Corey Dillon, 42 yards on this drive alone, the low for him this year against Buffalo in the first meeting where he had 79 yards. I said in the opening, you know, if he controls the offense, Corey Dillon, it just makes it so much easier well, the Buffalo, for Mr. Wonderful. When you look at the Buffalo Bills where they're ranked, they're ranked third defensively. You just don't expect people to come out and run it down your throat. Vinatieri with a chip shot. He's missed only once the entire season. Still only once. 
one of the great clutch kickers in the NFL, and Corey Dillon keeps this drive as the New England Patriots take a 3-0 lead at home. Coaches always talk about the importance of scoring first. Well, the Patriots have scored first in 14 straight games, only one shy of the NFL record set by the 78 Dolphins. They've done it again here tonight, taking a 3-0 lead as Charlie Weiss gets a lot of production out of running back Corey Dillon. Charlie Weiss is one of those people in football that, in my opinion, just doesn't get enough credit for what he's done with this offense. It's methodical in its approach. And I will say this, that both coordinators in this game have gone to the University of Notre Dame. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Tom really Clements see. for the Bills and Charlie Weiss for the New England Patriots. I'm overwhelmed with that piece I know of you information. Are. <laughs> You're impressed. Yeah. Terrence McGee deep to receive. Backs up a yard deep on this. Bobbles it. 20, 30, 33 yard line. Let's check in with Susie. Guys, as we've seen, as Brady goes, so goes the Patriots. His leadership comes from his work ethic. He is one of the hardest workers on this team. He says it goes all the way back to high school when he was a backup on an 0-17. He said, can you imagine how bad we were? The only way he knew to really stand out was to work harder than anybody else. From that, he got effort and energy, and it became fun. He says even today, that's where he gets his confidence. That's where he gets his strength. Susie, it's amazing to hear him say, if I don't prepare that hard, I'm not a very good football player. A lot of people would disagree, but he does prepare hard. Bledsoe somehow got out of there, and Bledsoe dives across the 40-yard line. Now, that to me is the difference in Drew Bledsoe from the beginning of the season to now. Against the Miami Dolphins, he ran one for 11 yards. Last week against the Jets, he ran one for 17 yards. And now you see him pick up eight yards. Look, he avoids the rush, manages to get away from Vrabel. Now, instead of trying to stand in the pocket and throw the football, he's just being an athlete. He's just going out and making plays with his legs. Did you see him dive? He can't slide. Doesn't practice. McGay No place to go. Well, they did a beautiful job of stringing that out, waiting for help. Ty Warren oh. gets the tackle, but it was set up by everybody else. Well, look, at they, they stretch it out, and then Ty Warren, number 94, he's going to put the finishing touches on this. Look at Ty Warren. He's up on the top side of the screen. He's being blocked at the line of scrimmage. Now watch him move down the line. Vrabel is there. Bang! There's the move. Such an active group of linebackers and guys who just hustle on every single play. Travis Henry comes in as the third down back on third and five. And he'll get the draw. And he'll be tackled in the backfield. Now a flag comes in. That's going to be for a late hit. Dexter Reed, a backup safety, came flying in there. And I think got there well late. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, a late hit. Number 42, New England, 15 yard penalty, first down. Michael, there's a thing about being over aggressive or being stupid. This is being stupid. You already got, you already got the guy stopped. And look at this. You know what? It's a rookie. He, and he leads with his head. That's why they called it. Well, it's all he's a rookie. I mean, nor under normal circumstances, you would not have him playing in the game. But with the with Tyrone Poole down, with Ty Law down, you've got to have people playing. Big play, it's an automatic first down in New England territory. See, I think this is going to be an education for Willis McGahee. He's a rookie. So he's not going to be the most disciplined runner. He uses his athletic ability, uses his eyes to run, and think he sees holes. Against the New England Patriots defense, as active as they are up front with those guys, he's going to see a hole and it's going to close. Because he didn't play against them the first time. So this is his first chance to see a defense that can match him step for step. Well, why don't they attack the defensive secondary of the, Boston, or the uh, New England Patriots? Because... Patient, patient, Grasshopper, patience. Bledsoe with time out in the flat and dropped by Ewis, the tight end. Tried to turn up field before he had possession. Did he call you Grasshopper again? Yes, no, it's Grasshopper. You know, Mike, the boy is, my the, boy, 
I'll tell you, we need another buy. I think you got to go back. And, you know, I really think that he has to go back and find Eric Moles. Mike Malarkey did a heck of a job in Pittsburgh a year ago getting the ball to Heinz Ward. I think Eric Moles is the kind of a guy that you got to try and find. And maybe he's going to be matched up against Troy Brown. Brown comes in to play defensive back. And he's playing on the slot. They try to spread the field. Bledsoe with time and almost intercepted by Rodney Harrison. He was had going. nothing but green in front of him. Well, when, let me tell you something. When you go to Moles all the time, and that's what Bledsoe does, come on, on third down, he goes to all the time. This time, Rodney Harrison is just sitting there waiting on it. Watch him step up in front. He looks at Moles the entire way. Rodney Harrison steps up. It's touchdown. He drops the ball. Rodney Harrison is never going to get an easier ball thrown to him from anybody. 29 career interceptions for Rodney Harrison. The 30th would have been a touchdown. This punt sails into the end zone. It will come out to the 20. And the Pats leading 3 0 will start from there. Who is your Sunday stud who had the best day in the NFL? How about Jerome Bettis over 100 yards again? Or Marshall Falk, 139 yards rushing. Joe Horn, 167 receiving. An average day for Peyton Manning, 320 through the air, five touchdowns. For Fred Taylor, 144 yards. You can vote right now by logging on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. the guy with five touchdowns. Peyton Manning is having an okay year, isn't he? <laughs> Brady well, started to throw and was drilled by 335 pounds Sam Adams. I'm going to tell you what Sam Adams just unloads but he comes up the middle. He is number 95 and he just splits a double team. They don't even hardly touch him and he buries Brady. Well he used some great hands on Stephen Neal. Now Stephen Neal's a wrestler. You think to yourself, if anybody's got quick, good hands, he's going to have it. That time, Sam outhanded him. He pinned him, and then he pinned Brady. Deep downfield for Brady, and Gibbons had two steps on the secondary, and it was overthrown. Yeah. He had time to throw it, too, and he had an alley to throw it. Let me tell you, that particular play is one that Tom Brady talks about. When he said, when you play the Buffalo Bills, you don't get a whole lot of opportunities to be able to get big plays against them. And when you have it, you have to take advantage of it. You see, you see London Fletcher back in pass coverage, and he can't get to Gibbons. Puts, it, puts the move on Reese, who slips, and Tom Brady just overthrows him. You get a safety and a linebacker on a wide receiver, and the safety fell down. You got six defensive backs in the Bills, do. Blitz coming, good protection, and now Brady just going to have to throw it away. So an outstanding defensive series by the third-ranked defense in the National Football League, and Ron Edwards put the pressure on Tom Brady. One of the things that the Buffalo Bills really do so well and why they're three in defense is because when they have the two big guys, Adams and Williams, up in the middle, 93 and 95, they get relief. As soon as those guys make a couple of plays, they bring the big, big guys in along with them. Ron Edwards is one of them. Nate Clements back to receive the punt. Josh Miller gets it out of there. It's in front of Clements. He can't field it and goes out of bounds. Just past the 40 yard line. A 47 yard kick. A 3 0 game, first quarter. Hope you'll join us for a full night of football next Sunday on ESPN starting at 730 Eastern with NFL primetime. Then Brett Favre and the Packers go to Houston to take on David Carr and the Texans on Sunday night football at 830 Eastern. Brett Favre was up to his old tricks today. Yeah, just move the chains in the two minute drill and win the game. At one minute drill. That'll give him a minute. Say, OK, Brett, look, you can't have two minutes. You can have a minute change. And one timeout instead of two. What an unbelievable job he did. Bledsoe and the Bills take over from the 42. Boy, they keep it on the ground, and they've opened up some pretty decent holes for Willis McGahee. 11 yards on that one. 
Well, Shelton, number 31, gets an outstanding block on the outside on Roosevelt Colvin, number 59. And that's why this play got out. The linebackers, has got they have to get to the outside and turn everything back in. That time, watch this. Look, look on this side, down the bottom. Look at the block by Shelton on 59 Colvin. The okay, he's already by. See, Roosevelt Colvin is still not himself. He had hip surgery in the offseason. He's getting better, but he's nowhere near what he was when the Pats got him. Bill's back in New England territory at the 47. Bledsoe straight back. As time again throws deep, overthrown, and intercepted. Eugene Wilson makes the pick inside the five, the third of the season for Eugene Wilson. Well, Bledsoe got, got away with one interception by Rodney Harrison almost, and also the sack by Brabel. But look at this. You talk about Eugene Wilson. I put him on the offense. If you're moving people around, watch him dive for this ball. Well, you he see, outruns the football. Well, he's trying to go to Eric Moles again, and he just stays with him. Eugene Wilson just continued to slide more and more towards Eric Moles, and then what a terrific job on the reception and what how he great protects catch the ball. By Wilson. So this battered secondary comes through again. This time the starting three safety, who used to be a corner. And Tom Brady and the Patriots will take over at their own three. Dylan. <laughs> nice way for the Pats to end the first quarter as Corey Dillon sprints up to the 15-yard line. End of one. Patriots three. Bills nothing. Corey Dillon with a big first quarter. We said what a critical acquisition he was in the offseason for this ball club. It gave him that added dimension of speed, and that speed was certainly on display here in the first quarter as they take a 3-0 lead over the Buffalo Bills and have a first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. 56 yards so far for Corey Dillon, and that's in the first quarter. And they said if he controls the game, it makes it a lot easier. Tom Brady. He has played in seven of the eight they have played this year, and they've won all seven. Dylan with another chance. Well, you know what's happening? Past the 20. Excuse me, Mike. You know what? You know what's really happening with Corey Dillon? These guys are staying with their blocks. This offensive line and the receivers outside are really staying with the defensive guys and are giving him a chance to make a move. See, and he, and he really is one of those guys, we talk about make one move and then go. He would much rather put the sights on a safety and take him out as opposed to try and put a nifty move on and go around him. That's the way he's been running. Now, he has the ability to slide and cut, but he's not going to try and make too many people miss and dance around. Whereas Willis McGahee on the other side is a little bit more of a dancer because of his youth in the game. Well, there's a holding penalty on that play, so they're bringing that one back. There were people who were critical of the acquisition because of the problems Dylan had had in Cincinnati. But Bill Belichick was very good about investigating what kind of guy Corey Dillon really is. There were no problems. He got tired of losing. Brady. Right down the middle and a diving grip. What a catch. Gibbons just rolled over and gave himself up. This play is made because Corey Dillon through the entire first quarter has forced the linebackers of the Buffalo Bills to respect him. Watch the two linebackers. See how they move towards the line of scrimmage? Now that gives David Gibbons a chance to get underneath the secondary and on top of the linebacker. But look at the catch. Look at how he gets his hands underneath and protects the ball. Look at the guy that couldn't get back, number 51, Takeo Spikes, who is a very active linebacker in pass defense. Coming into this game, given 36 of his 37 catches had been for first downs. He has been a big play guy for this team. That pass was a little too high for him. That's the second time they've thrown that pass, that fake to, fake to his left and then throw back to the right. They are bound and determined to try and hit that slant off of a little quick fake. That's, you're right. And that's the other thing about Charlie Wise that I think is, is so good, Charlie White. What is, he's willing to go back to plays. He doesn't just say, I'm going to call one play and that one's done for the night. He will continue to repeat plays to set something up. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. Brady steps away, throws to the sideline, and got it out of there. Uh, I did. You talk about Mr. Calm and Mr. Cool. 
Corey Dillon does a terrific job. And this isn't one of those blitzers that just comes sort of waltzing on in. Watch this. Here comes a blitz on the outside. Right up the middle. There it is. That's London Fletcher. Look at Tom Brady. I think I'll just slide to the left a little bit and let me throw it away over here. You know, the funny part about Tom Brady, he told us in a minute, he said, hey, look, don't look for me to run. I can't. <laughs> he said, I can't get my feet going fast enough to run. He said, so I, I, what I have to do, I have to do it like Marino did it. I have to slide in the pocket. Marino-esque. I think it's his greatest quality is his ability to stand in there and just move out of trouble and still be calm under pressure. Has to do it again. Unloads this time. Pass under thrown and caught at the 26-yard line. The bomb and brought down by Bethel Johnson, their speedster. There is a flag down, however, back at the 44, and the indication is against New England. Well, Nate Clements is complaining that David Patton pushed him. Illegal contact. Number 22, defense. is fine. Take the result of the play. First down. It was Nate Clements on, on David Patton, and that flag was thrown when that ball was in the air. Boy, and Tom Brady really upset about it, now consoling him. Bethel Johnson, watch him time this thing. Is that beautiful? The Wait. penalty was on the bottom of the field, and it was against Nate Clemens for holding at the line of scrimmage. But see, Izell Reese can't find the ball. That's been one of the problems they feel at that safety position. Falk is into the ball game, dances yeah. inside the 25. The initial indication was that it was going the other way and would wipe that play out. Right, but it did. Now, let me spin forward a little bit. Izell Reese has had a problem being a playmaker. He's a problem. He's had problems with that. Don't be surprised if when Troy Vincent comes back in a week or so, was brought in as a corner, might wind up playing safety for the Buffalo Bills. Don't be surprised. We saw a great one in Rod Woodson make that move late in his career. And Troy's very capable of doing that. And gives him a playmaker again. They were really hoping to have him back this week, but it's not ready to go yet. Dillon cuts it outside. Corey Dillon, 15, 10. Knocked out of bounds at the four. I'll tell you one thing. He stuck his hand right in the mouth of Aaron Schobel, number 94. Now, Aaron Schobel is getting blocked. He's coming right. He's already the outside. He already made the stiff arm, and here's Corey Dillon at the end of this play. Look at this guy turn up field. I mean, he's got some tremendous speed. They block him out of bounds. What's this? He's just, I mean, the guy is strong. He's fast. 75 yards already on eight carries. First and goal. Dillon again. Maybe a yard to the three. This, take a look at the way Corey Dillon has run tonight. This is the run chart. Eight rushes for 75 yards. Look at going left and outside. You're, Paul, you brought it up. Pat Williams, Sam Adams in the middle. Why even challenge it? The one off to the right for 30 yards actually started to the left and came back. But they keep running at Aaron Schobel at 262 pounds. And they say that Joe Andrusi and Matt Light, over 300 on that side, can do the job. Mike Vrabel's in a tight end. Dillon lowers his shoulder. <laughs> down near the one he had six 1,000 yard seasons in Cincinnati was absolutely miserable he comes to New England he's got a chance for 1,500 and you see how hard he runs well you know we talked to him the other day and I, you know I asked him I said you know Corey when you broke the record for, for a single game you just didn't look like it was something that you accomplished it was great to do he said I'll tell you what I was happy about it was our first win he said, I was more happy about the win than I was about breaking any kind of record. Seymour is in as a blocking back. That ball is loose and appeared to bounce right back to Brady. He, Brady got stepped on. Richard Seymour that time came in at tight end. We heard Susie talk about it in the beginning of the show. All the versatility that is used on this offense. Richard Seymour, a defensive end, comes in at fullback. Mike Vrabel goes in, is a linebacker. He goes in at tight end. We've already seen Troy Brown over on the other side of the ball playing defensive back. But they're going to have to settle for a field goal try, at least apparently, because Vinatieri threw a touchdown pass a week ago. 
He's hit two short ones. It is six nothing on field goals, but the Patriots have come up with some big plays to set those three pointers up. For beautiful Gillette Stadium, 70,000 plus on hand for the Patriots and the Bills. Six nothing New England on a pair of field goals. Hasn't Mr. Robert Kraft done a magnificent job with this place? Superb. I mean, it, there's not a bad seat in it. There's a lot of people in this place. Had a great dinner with Robert and his wife Myra the other evening. I was going to get the tab, the tab, but he beat me to it. Yeah. McGee, 25, 30, 33 yard line on the return. Kevin Casper makes the tackle on special teams. Can Buffalo get it started on offense? Patriots continue to lead now at 6 0 here in the second quarter at home with 10 and a half minutes to go. And Buffalo will start from its own 32 yard line. Well, it's drives of 81 and 91 yards, Paul, and they couldn't get a touchdown out of either one of those longs. That's why the Buffalo Bills are third in defense. Let's go with time and throw short to Eric Bowles. Let's go to Susie. Mike, it's the story of two quarterbacks that will always be connected here in New England. Drew Bledsoe has looked rejuvenated, but always a struggle against the Bill Belichick defense. Tom Brady, the best at manipulating any D, tossed for 89 yards. But it's been Corey Dillon who has been the dominant force, 77 yards on 10 carries, and it's only early in the second quarter. Six, nothing, Patriots. He is a big time running back that really gives them a boost over Antoine Smith, who was a really good running back as well. But he gives them that speed. Willie McGinnis led that defensive charge. Michael, I want to, I want to show you Drew Bledsoe in the pocket. Now, the fir this, this first one is the way I think he has to throw the football. It's five steps, set, and throw. He gets it out in 3-1. Now, that's good rhythm, good timing. This next one, he looks down the field. This is going to be an interception. Look at it. It's 3-9. Drew Bledsoe cannot sit that long in the pocket and give the defensive backs an opportunity to break on the ball. If he doesn't get it out around three seconds, 3-1, 3-2, I think he's going to run into problems throwing against this New England secondary no matter how much patchwork it has. Bledsoe throws underneath and dropped by Moles. Do you know that that pattern wasn't even a one-yard pattern for, to Moles? Moles never got back to the line of scrimmage when he throws the ball to him. That's how much he's looking at Moles. That's number one. And McGahan so far in this game has carried the ball nine times for 32 yards. And take a look at this play here. Look at Moles. He's going down the line of scrimmage. The pass is thrown here. He actually is covered. Yeah, I think there was somebody who wanted to go too deeper. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh... Mormon, beautiful kick. Falk back to the nine. Almost broke it. Got up to the 24-yard line or 15-yard return after a kick of 57. Back to New England after this. As part of the NFL J.C. Penny take a player to school program, Patriots wide receiver Bethel Johnson gave second grader Jacob Taylor of North Elementary School in Seekonk, Massachusetts, a ride in a limousine. Johnson was joined at the school by Jacob's favorite player of all time, Tom Brady. What a thrill for those kids. If I'd have been in a limo, though, I wouldn't want to go to school in it. <laughs> No, there's a, there's a beating at the end of that, isn't there? <laughs> Bad. Brady avoids the sack, gets it out to Dylan, and Dylan reaches the 30. We saw Drew Bledsoe in the pocket, under the pocket clock. Now take a look at Tom Brady. This is what he does. A little bit longer time. Look at the job up front. This first one's four seconds, and then he comes down underneath to the back. Now the next one is the long pass play to Bethel Johnson. Sets, steps, lots of times. Three nine, taking a little bit longer, but you look at the space that he has and the job that his offensive line is doing, giving him a chance to step up and make more accurate throws. Second and five, Dylan picks up a couple. Let's check in with Susie Colbert. Well, I just want to give you some perspective on what it means to Tom Brady to be on this list with Joe Montana. 
When Brady was a little kid, he idolized Montana, sitting in the nosebleed seats every game at Candlestick. His mom took him out of school to go to all the Super Bowl parades. He had the poster on the wall, and now he realizes that's what's going on in his own life. He said it's just so weird. Someday he might get it, but for right now, it's just goofy. He does understand, though, the impact that he has on little kids all over New England. And Susie, this is only his fifth year. He's already won two of them. Not to mention the big kids called the dads of the ring and all the fans of the past. And Corey Dillon will power his way to another first down for New England. See, I like this play here. It's, it's a little off tackle play, and it's kind of a stretch play. And Corey Dillon, all he has to do is get on the edge. He's coming to your left. Look at Seymour, number 93, a defensive end out in front blocking. For him. He just stayed right behind him. That's smart. You know, I like the fact that Bill Belichick uses different guys in different positions. Defensive guys playing offense, offensive guys playing defense. It gets everybody excited to come to work every day. Kevin Falk will come in to give Dylan a breather, and he'll get the carry. And Falk, good move. Got away from Sam Adams, who got one hand on him and couldn't hold him. What was the good move? Whoa. Getting away from to Sam Get Adams. away from <laughs> Sam Adams. Yeah, you, you betcha. Agree. Sam almost had one hand on him. You know, we're talking to Belichick about these guys. Not everybody can do this. And he was talking about the players. He's got some on his team that can play in different positions. He used but the, not a whole lot of guys can do that. They don't have the mentality to do it. He uses the term mental vers versatility to describe the players that can. Brady hit as he throws and tosses this one out of bounds incomplete. Here are the guys who have played both offense and defense this year. Dan Klecko, who is now on IR. Richard Seymour, the defensive end, has been in a fullback. Vrabel cut a touchdown pass a week ago. Troy Brown played just virtually everything last week, including some great work in the secondary. And Bill Belichick said you have to draft players that fit your system. His system is intelligence, versatility, dedication to this game, and sacrifice. Talent. That's, eh, five. that's down That's five. Brady, good protection again. Rifles this throw. Complete another first down. Gibbons, a 19-yard gain. I'm telling you what, this is unbelievable. If you just look at the time he has to throw the ball. Even Joe could complete this one. <laughs> Take a look at this. Watch. Look at the blocking up front. He's got the lane to throw the ball to. It's a perfect pass to Gibbons and just a magnificent catch. But take a look where the ball is. He's the only one that has a shot at it. And people don't realize how hard he throws the football. I've, I've practiced with this team. I've caught the ball. This kid throws it as hard as anybody in the game. Falk on the toss. Joe, I was just going to say. Tom Brady puts himself down as an athlete. He says, you know, I can't compete with these guys. I can't run. They do this. This kid's a good football player. He's, Don't let him kid you. You know what it is? And it's his mental makeup that impresses me. You, his demeanor on the field. Nothing is too big for him. Everything is done in patience and time. When he slides in the pocket, there's not a lot of hurried steps. And that's also great trust in your offensive line, who are doing a wonderful job in this game like they did the first time they played the Bills. Brady, good play, Faith. Drills another one. Gibbons inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. David Gibbons has already had a career year, and we're only halfway through the season. Mike, you talk about the clock in your head. Watch Brady. Watch what he does. He fakes. They're coming in from the outside. He just steps up and makes the play. That ball is out there in a heartbeat. Here comes Gibbons across. I mean, that's the second time in a row that pass is there. The one was high, he went and got it. The, that one hit him right in the gut. Gibbons averaging over 17.4 yards a catch. That's second in the NFL. Brady again. Rifles another one. This incomplete, and that was behind. David Patton, who was covered by Clemens. I want to show you the play before this one. I want to show you what David Gibbons is looking at. What you're going to see is you're going to see London Fletcher take off to the middle of the football field, and you're going to see both these guys go outside, and then you're going to see Gibbons come down and wind up in the middle. London Fletcher's running to the middle. Now, there goes Gibbons coming in deep behind him, and you see the safety is so far back, and the corner can't get there. 
big hole for Tom to be able to step it in. But the bottom line is he's got time. They have got no pressure up the middle. Here's a draw play to Falk, and Schobel will take him down from behind. Schobel out of TCU. He is their speed rusher and very active from that defensive end. I, I love to catch the way an offensive coordinator calls a game. I really like the way Charlie Wise is doing this. What he's doing is he's run, run, play action, hold the linebackers, hit a deep one, then play action, take it out to the flat. He's using the middle of the field as well as the perimeters, forcing Buffalo to spread their defense out. They're working on Corey Dillon. He has not been in for the last four plays. Looked like he was flexing a foot earlier. They had him seated on the bench and were working on him. Third and eight, Brady straight back, double pump to the end zone, wide open, Patton touchdown. Patton got lost, and Brady drilled it to him. Well, first of all, he looks everybody up, but Baker and Greer, 36, 37, and 26, are back there deep in the secondary. And watch, look, Brady, just watch his head. He's going to look right, look, 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 and now he sees Patton to the left. Look at this. He sees the defensive back fall down. Oh, man. 12 straight regular season game that Brady has a touchdown pass, and that one was almost too easy. Vinatieri for the point after. 13-0 New England. Smiles all around on the Pats bench. Tom Brady trying to take his club to eight and one and he has the 13 nothing lead on the Bills here in the second quarter having just thrown the touchdown pass to David Patton and Drew Bledsoe has seen this too often when he has come back to face his former team Terrence McGee is deep he's all the way up to the 17 and the NFL's Second leading kickoff returner dances his way across the 30 to about the 33. We talked about the New England Patriots having to play young guys. These are there you see Patton up top. What he's gonna do, just run a simple in. You've got Greer up at the corner, and you've got Rashad Baker as the safety, another rookie out of Tennessee. Baker the safety. He just gets totally lost running around trying to find David Patton. And Tom Brady looks to his right, holds him, and then comes back and wings it, and Baker winds up on the ground. So now the Bills, who have relied on their defense, find themselves down 13-0. Here's McGahee. Takes it to the outside to the 37-yard line. He'll pick up about five, where Randall Gay, the undrafted free agent out of LSU, comes up from the corner to make the tackle. Gay is in there. Earth went... Worland is playing back there. He was signed off the practice squad a week ago. Troy Brown, the wide receiver, is playing back there. I mean, they've been decimated by injuries. Ty Law is out. Tyrone Poole is out. Asante Samuel hurt a week ago, playing now with a bad shoulder. There is Molds in front of Randall Gay. But you know what you do have in the secondary, which is invaluable? Rodney Harrison. You may have all these other pieces that you have to move around, but you have a safety at the strong safety position, a guy who can put guys in places, and a guy who knows how the middle of the football field has to be handled. And why are you looking at me like that? Well, I'm just saying you have to go into the defensive huddle and say, look, 21 is gay. <laughs> oh. 29 is Earthwind Moreland. You guys introduce yourselves to each other. But, but Rodney's doing a good job of doing the introductions. Michael, listen to this. Buffalo Bills were allowing 268 yards a game. So far in the first half, New England has 246. That's in the first half. That completion that Drew Bledsoe just made to Eric Moles was the first completion since the first drive. And Ty Warren is having a game and a half. That was a big tackle right there in Rose McGay. Second and 11. Lee Evans was the motion man. He's been very quiet in the first half. Bledsoe picked off by Bruski. Teddy Bruski back across midfield looking for blocks. Michael, you know when you talk 
talked about how disciplined this defense is and how you play your position and you go where you're supposed to go. Well, that's what Bruschi did. Bruschi gets in the position. He knows where the ball is coming. He knows where he's supposed to be, and he's there. Watch number 54 is Bruschi, and watch him get back in coverage. When he gets back in coverage, look, he's, he's looking at Bledsoe, looking at Bledsoe. He's just reading the end coming in, picks up the ball, and everybody thinks he's going to go down. He wants to score. Look at Bruschi. He knows I have to get to this spot. The receiver's coming back into the inside. Lee Evans, I just get in front of him. Second interception of the year for Bruschi. Patton on the quick hitch. And Patton shakes a tackle and gets it inside the 15 yard line. That's Bledsoe a having another tough, tough night against his former you team. You know what, though? We give Romeo Cornell and Bill Belichick a lot of credit for being great defensive coordinators. But when you go up against a guy that you've known and you know his weaknesses and you know how to go out and attack him, I think there's familiarity here that's creating a problem for Drew Bledsoe. He's got to figure it out soon or else this game's going to get away from him. Coming up at the half, the Toyota Halftime Show with Chris Berman, the fastest three minutes in television and Boomer's Halftime Heroes. All of that more coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show. Two minutes to go here, and the Patriots driving for more from the 12-yard line, already up 13-0. Don't worry about Corey Dillon. He has a bruised leg and, and is questionable. Falk, horse collar, second effort inside the 10. I want to take you back to the interception and keep an eye on Drew Bledsoe. There's his eyes. Look at where he's looking. He's looking out to the right. He's looking out to the right. Now, Teddy Bruschi sees that as well. He's looking for Lee Evans. Never has taken his eyes off. A little double clutch. Now, Bruschi just steps right in front. And that was Tim Ewis that really thought. Now, see, look at this. He's standing flat-footed. You can't make throws throwing flat-footed. You've got to be able to get yourself moving and get some momentum on the ball. Brady straight back under pressure. Throws over the middle. That's complete down to the five. Malloy was in on the stop as Patrick Pass makes the catch. But he's going to be about three yards shy of a first down. You know what, down well, here. Brady's throwing to everybody, Joe. Well, I'll tell you, throw one to the fullback. Remember, he's thrown it to one tight end. I think that, to me, you know, we saw Christian Fourier catch one. Corey Dillon's not in the game, so hey, why not throw it to number 88 again? He's on the right side. Daniel Graham moves up to the left side. Graham's a guy who hasn't caught a pass in two weeks. Brady over the middle. That's another touchdown for you. Nice call, Justin. You the former Seahawk makes the grab, and New England is pounding that Buffalo defense. You know what? I, I, I always look for when I see a guy come off the bench, and he's really fresh like Poirier did, and he put him in the game. I, I put somebody on him right see if away. he's smiling, too. <laughs> yeah, that's the other key. Because he's bringing a play into himself. But you know, I mean, it's just what has set this all up. Terrific play action fake. And if the New England Patriots were not running the football effectively, Buffalo would not respect that fake. Vinatieri for the point after. And it is 20 to nothing, New England. 273 yards of offense in the first half, and Tom Brady has thrown for 170 of that 273. And going into this game, I said it before, the Bills are giving up a total of 268 yards a game. They've already surpassed that. They're already five over their average for an entire game. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have made quite a team so far. And they are third on the all-time list. Winning percentage for head coaches and quarterbacks. Topped by Paul Brown and Otto Graham, Vince Lombardi, and Bart Starr. A couple of legendary couples. Give these guys a little more time. And That's I have right. a feeling they're going to creep up. And Coach Lombardi and Bart Starr may not be holding that position as much. Let me just uh, just say something here. We, we, we looked at this New England team, and we looked at them last week, 
against St. Louis and they beat them with, with I mean hardly anybody that you mentioned in the secondary okay except for Rodney Harrison thank so you we got him and Rodney will appreciate but I'm going to tell you what when you look at this team everybody on this team knows where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. and it doesn't make any difference who he puts in there I don't care if it's a free agent or not. They know what they're supposed to do. This is a well-coached football team. And what you saw in that graphic was the distribution to the wide receivers, to the tight ends, to the running backs. Everybody's catching the ball. The Bills would love to respond with something here. They're down 20 to nothing. And they'll start from scrimmage from their own 29. Let's go to Susie. Well, this has been like a party for the Patriots and linebacker Mike Vrabel, who has been a poster child for their for their versatility, told me that it's an unbelievable feeling to be able to keep doing things that people don't believe you can do week after week. People walk into their locker room and ask them, how can you keep doing this without any stars? He said, that's the whole idea. We're just a bunch of football players. We love playing the game. We love playing for each other. That's our strength. Susie, they have done a brilliant job building this team putting this roster together Bledsoe under pressure and down he goes See, and I think they are stars I don't you know they don't get the hype I think that's the difference I in agree the New with England play New England players they don't get the hype all over the place but in their own right they're star football players they don't care about hype no they really don't you know it's like they win 21 Hey, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't gotten to the playoffs yet. When we get to the playoffs, we'll talk to you. Well, tonight they're on their way to 23 out of 24. The score here at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Patriots 20 builds nothing. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Toyota Halftime Show. All right, Michael, thank you very much. So the Patriots putting on a clinic as they have done so often in recent times, and we'll be going back up to Frosty Foxborough shortly. The only team, of course, to beat the Patriots uh, in those games has been the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers had a rivalry of their own today. They renewed acquaintances with the Cleveland Browns. And here we go. Some war of the words a few days before, and then William Green apparently spitting in the face of Joey Porter. This before the game in Cleveland, both tossed out. Meanwhile, Jerome Bettis, he had the whole offensive line in there. Bettis had two touchdowns, a 100-yard day. And the defense, Russell Stubach, returns this one. The Steelers win 24-10. to They've won seven in a row. More in a moment. Meanwhile, clock mismanagement, Jets late. Quincy Carter, they squander time. Field goal at the end of the game ties Baltimore, but in overtime. Kyle Bowler to Kevin Johnson, setting up what he can do at OT twice last year, and this year, Matt Stover, good. Ravens come from behind to beat the Jets, 20 to 17. First place on the line in the NFC Norris division. Dante Culpepper to Mo Williams, four TD passes for this Viking quarterback, tied with the Packers at 31. Brett Favre, Tony Fisher, setting up Brian Longwell, good. The Pack beat the Vikes, 34-31. They won four other times for first. First place on the line in the NFC West. Mark Bolger, Kevin Curtis, Rams throwing the first 13 times against the Seahawks. Sean Alexander, this play typifies Seattle. Six times in time to 30, but all they got was field goals. Fumble, Williams forces it. Rams beat the Seahawks 23 12. They're tied for first. Mike Vick, showdown with Tampa Bay for first in the NFC South. Algie Crumpler touchdown 24 14. Atlanta is 7 and 2. Meanwhile, Peyton Manning, you can't stop him. Five touchdown passes. Two to Dallas Clark. Colt all over Houston 49 14. The Jaguars had their way to Detroit until two fourth quarter punt returns by Eddie Janitor in a drum. This one with a minute to go. Amazing. It tied the game. He could go all the way into overtime. But then David Garrard starting in place of the injured Byron Leftwich. Jimmy Smith, touchdown, 23-17. Jags win an OT. Billy Bullock starting for McNair for Tennessee. To Drew Bennett, 47 yards. Titans lead by three. Bears field goal ties it. Then their defense. Gets in the act, it's a safety. Only the second time ever, an overtime game's been won by a safety. 1917 Chicago, Emmett Smith, two touchdowns. 
Giants squander a big lead as they did last week. Kurt Warner's pass. Tipped by Arizona's Carlos Dansby. Arizona wins 17-14. Mark Brunel benched. Patrick Ramsey in. Didn't matter. Picked by the Bengals, Torrey James. They beat Bill Parcells and Joe Gibbs in straight weeks. And they win it, 17-10. Meanwhile, Aaron Brooks to Joe. Don't bother me. I'm on the horn. Touchdown. Saints beat the Chiefs 27-20. Todd Sauerbrunn. Casey Hurt. Sauerbrunn, the putter, makes a 30-yard field goal. Panthers from behind in San Francisco. Jake Daylight, come. I got a demo. To Musi Muhammad. Niners squander a 17-0 lead. Carolina beats them 37-27. This halftime show is presented by the all new Toyota Tacoma. Now that's moving you forward. When we return, halftime heroes, which have to include Peyton Manning and the Bears defense, scoring all sorts of ways. Welcome back to the Toyota Halftime Show with your host, Chris Berman. 20 to nothing, the Patriots all over the Buffalo Bills at the half. Well, an axiom in football is, okay, it's nice to get a rookie quarterback and get him some time, but you can't win with him. I mean, Peyton Manning only won a few games when he started right out of the gates. Trey Aikman won one game the first year he was with the Dallas Cowboys. Can't win with a rookie quarterback. Wrong. Here's our halftime heroes, and every week we got to show you Ben Roethlisberger. Northern Ohio kid playing in Cleveland. What a thrill for him. And he's got receivers. He's got mobility. He's got receivers like Heinz Ward making blocks. And he's got Plexico Burris. He and Burris have a great thing together. And Ben can run. And oh, by the way, he's 7 and 0. Oh, first rookie to do that ever since they kept track of him. Craig Krenzel, 3 and 0 oh for the Bears, but he's getting help with his defense. This defense, here's Michael Haynes, the defensive line scoring his defense and special teams have scored five TDs already this year. And oh, by the way, Alex Brown, the sack, a goodly a falls on Fred Miller. The safety wins the game. Eddie Drummond, not one, but two punt returns in the fourth quarter for Detroit. Only the 11th time that a man has returned two punts for a touchdown in a game. Obviously much less in one quarter, albeit for not as the Lions lost. Brett Favre. I mean, did that buy come at the right time for him? The thumb, the hand to Javon Walker and the Packers like salad days again. They were one and four. They're now five and four as far has thrown four touchdown passes in a scintillating win over the Minnesota Vikings. And Peyton Manning, I could do that better. Remember how they hooked up for that great game earlier this year? Five TD passes for Peyton Manning, 31 on the season, Dan Marino's record in 1984 of 48 certainly is in jeopardy. Dallas Clark was the long one of the day. Look at the big tight end go. Peyton Manning, three five touchdown pass games in his last seven games this year, has five for his career. Marino has six. And anytime you can put George Blanda and Warren Moon on a graphic, you certainly want to put it up there. Sunday stud, yeah, Manning will get some votes. You can vote and log on. Jerome Bettis will get some votes. Marshall, 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 log on, vote. We'll be back with more at the half. seen this look before on Drew Bledsoe's face when he has faced the Pats defense under Bill Belichick and they don't even get the ball New England gets the ball back again to start the half and they better stop them. pass fields it on the bounce the 13. Cut down as he reaches the 27-yard line. 
Buffalo came in saying, all right, we have to run the ball. We have to throw the ball. You have to have balance. It may only be 20 to nothing, but it's the time to go, hey, here's your balance. No, I'll tell you what. I, I really believe that they have to, with that secondary that New England has, you've got to go attack it, and you've got to give Bledsoe some time to throw the ball. I think the McGay factor in this game is just about burnout. You guys have never played that position. I want to tell you, if nope. you just start dropping Drew Bledsoe back in that pocket, you're asking for him to get beat up. I, I think you've got to try and run the football a little bit, and we're going to see a lot of it from the New England Patriots because the Buffalo Bills have not been able to stop any runs to the left side tonight. They have taken Aaron Schobel, number 94, and made him the target of where they want to run the football. He's a smallish defensive end at around 260, and they're putting two 300-pounders on her, on him, plus Daniel Graham, the tight end, and they're just running left. And Kevin Falk there. gets the first carry because Corey Dillon with the leg injury, his return is questionable. They're not even looking to run the ball in the middle of the field. They got those two big guys in the middle of the field, and Adams and Williams. No reason to go there. Falk again slithers up to about the 42. Right, Corey Dillon, we may not see him again, but what he did in the first half was it was just about enough. Just take a look at this guy. And the move to the outside, that's Schobel trying to make a tackle, which he doesn't do. And they're staying to the outside with Corey Dillon. He had over, the, over 70 yards in the first half, and he didn't play about the last eight or nine minutes of the second quarter. This guy has just got, I, I think he's, for as big as he is, has got tremendous quickness. And I think where the score is, you don't try and force him back on. Brady with time goes underneath to his tight end, Daniel Graham. In the beginning of the year, Daniel Graham was a big target for Tom Brady. Five touchdown passes, had 18 receptions, and the last few games really didn't play in this much because of the problems that they had. They needed him in the backfield, or they needed him on the line to help out on that offensive line a bit, and he's been more of a blocker. Now they're ready to open it up again. Uh, Michael, you want some good things for the Buffalo Bills? Some good news? It's going to be tough to find one right I got, now. I got one, I got one. No flags. No flags. And Falk tackles across midfield. We saw how the New England Patriots wanted to run the football. Now this is how they wanted to throw the football. Look at the distribution. Down the middle of the field, you've got seven for nine and two touchdowns. Outside, you play, you throw just enough to keep the, the corners and the safeties having to cover all 53 and a third yards of the football field. Great distribution and great play calling by Charlie Weiss. Speaking of distribution, 10 different receivers for Tom Brady tonight, and that's not unusual either. Who's ever open gets the ball. Brady right down the middle. This one was behind Patton. He had beaten Clements. Well, you know, <laughs> you look at Brady and you run a play action pass and you have Falk in the ball game and you run a play action pass and the defensive line and linebackers never leave the line of scrimmage. He had all day to throw this football. Take a look at this. Watch the fake to Falk here. Now look at look at the line of scrimmage. There is a white shirt to be had. See, I, David Patton a couple times tonight has done some things that Tom Brady hasn't been comfortable with, and he has he's just sort of getting back into the groove of things. I think he was supposed to sit that route down to the middle. Third and nine. Brady all day to throw again. This one knocked away from Patton. The crowd wants a flag. Rashad Baker, the rookie out of Tennessee, a free agent got a hand in there. Good coverage. There is, there a, is a marker down. Holding. Number 59. Hey. Defense. Five-yard penalty. An automatic first down. That's on London Fletcher, the middle linebacker. All right, who's the guy up here that said they didn't have a flag thrown yet? You? I, I don't look at me. I think it was me. I think well, it was too. <laughs> Talk about Jinx and someone. In fact, it was. I mean, this is this is really good defense. They, they they're holding him, and you got a holding at the line, of, almost near the line of scrimmage. You know, you figured that rule was going to affect linebackers and tight ends more than anybody. Patrick Pass now the single setback. As they go with three wide receivers, George Bryant the slot. Gibbons knocked away by Terrence McGee. Boy, he had him beat, though. Tom Brady just didn't get enough air under this one. 
David Givens is on top in a hurry. Now he's got to come back and try and make a play. McGee does a good job of going up for the ball as well. But David Givens is running up the field if Tom Brady can put it out to him. McGee was torched a week ago by the Jets. Gave up six plays for 163 yards. And Corey Dillon makes an appearance. On second and ten. Sideline for a while with an unspecified leg injury. Patton underneath has the first down and more. I'll tell you, this is when you really know it's getting sloppy. That you got Nate Clemens, number 22, coming up on Patton. Patton's not a big guy. Here, they don't even fake the Corey Dillon on this play. Take a look at this play. Now watch what he tries to do. Clemens comes up and tries to hand tackle Patton. Patton just runs right through it. Bang, he catches the ball back to the outside. He runs away from London Fletcher. I mean, you can't. When you want to get back in the game, you got to hit somebody. Now you got to now you got to go smash mile. Dylan out of the eye this time from the 28. Hit in the backfield, bounces off the tackler. He'll pick up a couple. Pat Williams at 320 just bounced off of it. Corey Dillon does such an unbelievable job. I mean, his forearm, or excuse me, the stiff arm. Watch the stiff arm. Carries the ball in his left arm. And now he just uses that right arm to just push. There it is. Push the big guy down. Just enough to push it away. And that's how powerful and strong he is. As we said, Antoine Smith, whom he replaced, who they let go and didn't bring back, he didn't have that burst to the outside. Later on in the year, people got tired of tackling him because he was such a big bat. But Corey Dillon gives you that extra burst outside. Second and five. Brady. Brown down to the five and Tom Brady just picking this outstanding defense apart. Didn't you enjoy talking to Troy Brown? We we're talking to the other oh, day great. and he just says, you know what? This is really a close football team. We really don't have any superstars. We're all we're all about the same. Take a look at it. He gets open. Look at the pass he throws. Troy Brown coming off the line of scrimmage. Sit. The ball is there. Turn up the field. I mean, these are perfect passes. But again, Brady's got all day. Just slides away from Jeff Posey. By the way, he's from Marshall. Dylan. I mean, think about it. Pete. Troy Brown is number three all time for this franchise in catches, number four all time in yards. And in in training camp and in the preseason, they say we want you to work a little bit in the defensive backfield too. And he's played DB the last two weeks. But his response to Bill Belichick was, Coach, I'm a football player. I'll play wherever you want. Now, now he we talked about Randy Moss and Byron Leftwich and Chad Pennington all these guys out of Marshall here's a guy who goes back 12 years also out of Marshall so that school's been putting him out for a long time Richard Seymour is in as a blocking back as Dylan tries to pick his way through the defense down to about the two Mark it closer to the one. Do you have a feeling about Corey Dillon? He's questionable coming back. When he looks at this football team, I'm not questionable. I'm playing. And when you look at this defense here, right here, I mean, this, this really tells you how good the defense of the Buffalo Bills has been. They have not given up a 100-yard rusher this season. Well, Dillon has 99. And if he scores a touchdown here, two yards out, That'll be uh, 101. Now you got Mike Vrabel in the game, number 50, down here on the left side, and Richard Seymour. And Seymour's trying to get open in the corner of the end zone. Brady trying to buy time and has to throw it away. And Daniel Graham comes up limping at the end of that play. I think Brady wanted to throw the ball to Seymour. I really do, because he, he watch it, he's, he moves him around. He moves him around. Come here. Now get open. Just come on, come back, come back a little bit. Come Go back. back. Go back, Richard. Go back. <laughs> He just oh. ran out of time and had to throw it away. Now, you know, Richard's going to look at that and say, okay, I know what to do next time. Finitary trying his third chip shot field goal of the night. He is now 20 of 21 this year. That would have been the 11th different receiver he caught. New England adds three more to the total. 23 nothing against Buffalo. This is the town of Gloucester, America's oldest fishing port, about an hour north of Boston. A little cold for fishing. Ice fishing pretty soon. They do a lot of that in Buffalo, I'll tell you that. Looks like Paul trying to open a bottle of Budweiser. Thank you very much. 
Terrence McGee deep to receive. Moves up to the 13. And taken down near the 30. Not much has gone right with the Bills. They still have time. They have to get started. Bills have the ball at their own 30, down 23-0. The first drive of the game, they went 45 yards, looked pretty good. Since then, their last five drives, they have picked up a total of 32 yards, and Drew Bledsoe has eight yards passing in those five drives. Now he's directing traffic and has molds coming to this side, along with the rookie Lee Evans. Here they come. And molds incomplete. Let's go to Susie. Well, I spoke to Mike Malarkey. His goal for the second half to get in position for makeable third downs. He said they're just not operating the offense efficiently. And I asked him if that was anything that the Patriots specifically were doing. He said the bottom line is they are just lining up and challenging us, and we are not accepting the challenge. And Susie, they're doing it again with a much depleted secondary. Guys in there who are free agents. Guys who were signed off the practice squad a week ago, and McGahey gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. I mean, this is truly, to me, a remarkable performance by a defense that's been remarkable for a lot of time. All right, Mike, and I'll tell you why this defense is so effective. Willie McGinnis, number 55. He's up, he's down, but watch what he does here. He doesn't make the play. Shelly comes out and block him. He turns it back in so that the defensive lineman can help out and make the play. This is everybody playing their position. They're not gambling. They're not even allowed to gamble. And you pick up a Keith Trailer, a big guy who's able to move inside. Not real tall, but yet very athletic and agile. And so many linebackers who can do so many things. Here they come. Good protection for Bledsoe and bounces this one in there. Drew Bledsoe. Intended for Sam Aiken. We've seen the time that Tom Brady has had. Slide around, step up, throw the ball. Drew Bledsoe is throwing flat-footed right now. He's got people in his face. There's no way he's going to be able to get anything on the ball if it's in his face. Richard Seymour is covering. Look at his feet. Look at his feet. I mean, he's dead flat-footed, and he's trying to jump throw. And you just can't get anything on it. Mormon to punt to Kevin Falk. Another good kick and Falk all the way back to his 13. Ooh. Nowhere to go. Brought down to 20. A 57 yard kick from Brian Mormon, who's taken over number one all time at Buffalo for Paul McGuire. Monday Night Countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Got an ABC at 9 Eastern. Donovan McNabb and T.O. lead the Eagles into Dallas to take on Bill Parcells Cowboys on Monday Night Football. And you have to wonder if T.O. is going to do some encouraging of Donovan McNabb again this week like he did last week. Is that what that was? I was encouraging him. Corey Dillon in there for this series from the 20 and Brady changing the play. Dillon will get the carry after the 25. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, very different type of night for these two quarterbacks. Drew Bledsoe, another difficult day against the Bill Belichick defense. Two picks and a sack. Tom Brady, Mr. Smooth as usual, 15 of 25 for 211 yards and two touchdowns, mixing it up. Corey Dillon, a dominating evening, even out hurt, 98 yards. This Bills D yet to give up a 100-yard rusher could be coming soon. Well, let's update that total, Susie, with that carry. He's now up to 16 for 102. He'll lose a couple here, drop back at the 20-yard line. And Sam Adams again with penetration. Knock him down and then help him up. Well, Susie's right. Now he's back under 100. Yes, he is. <laughs> right back underneath. Way to go, Suze. She put the whammy on him. Now, we talked about the versatility of what New England does with their players. Sam Adams actually winds up at the tight end or the tight end position in goal line if Buffalo ever gets near it, <laughs> which they haven't tonight. Well, they could be at the 20, and Sam would have them near it. Oh. Put Pat Williams on the other side. Then you're on it. One, 
blitz coming. They pick it up beautifully. Falk underneath to the 26 yard line. See, well, or Patrick pass well short. I, of I just first really down. like the way Tom Brady plays football. Just nice and patient back there, not forcing anything. And you look at the time that he's had throwing the football. Steps up, big deep one to Bethel Johnson, does a nice job of playing the ball. Now he steps over to David Patton, looks it off to the right, fires it back. Now you do it again to Christian Fourier. All this is set up by a terrific job by the offensive line. Nate Clemens back to the punt of Josh Miller. Clemens to 23, lost his footing. Lost two on the return after a punt of 50. Gerard Cherry, nice coverage. Bills quarterback Drew Bledsoe was among the guests on Friday for the unveiling of the Buffalo Bills youth football field. The Bills are the first franchise to open a facility dedicated to youth football on the same grounds as the team headquarters. That pioneers an initiative first presented by Commissioner Paul Tagliabue at the NFL owners meeting in March. I think it's a great thing to do. Well, congratulations, Mr. Ralph Wilson, the owner of the Buffalo Bills. He's been there since the beginning, yeah. 1960. And I think Paul Tagliabue does such a great job of leading this this league I mean he truly has tremendous foresight the owners you know believe in what his visions are and it's things like that that really connect I think the league to the community it has been a wickedly difficult night for this Buffalo Bills offense and Bledsoe throws the mold up at the 31 let's go to Susie Mike here's a flashback and a reminder how tough Drew Bledsoe is. Remember September 2001? This hit sheared an artery in his chest, his lung filled with blood, and it collapsed. Well, Tom Brady told me that he had never heard a hit that loud before. Brady, he says, we'll wait for this play, guys. Brady gives it off to McGahee, and McGahee to the 32. Go ahead, Sus. Well, Brady told me that he watched Drew Bledsoe try to re regroup, that he leaned down, picked up his helmet, the face mask was bent, and he was trying to straighten it out so he could go back in, even with that extreme kind of injury. He has so much respect for Drew Bledsoe, and he said that season, the way he guided him the rest of the way, was one of the main reasons why things went so smoothly and why the Patriots were able to win that Super Bowl. And that's one of the reasons it's so important, Susie, that players prepare themselves to get a, to be ready if they do get a chance to play. Because Tom Brady got the chance because of that injury. He grabbed a hold of it and never let go. And he's won two Super Bowl MVPs. When opportunity presents itself, you have to be ready to seize it. And that's exactly what Tom Brady did. And don't you like what the way he said it? He said, the way I the way I did all this, I had to study. He was ready to play knowing that you know that you're always one step away if you're the backup guy but he was ready mentally physically ready to play and he wasn't just paying lip service to that you no. know I'm going through the motions he was ready to play when he got the chance and this New England defense is ready to play tonight boy aren't they ever Mormon comes down with a high snap and gets another good kick out of there to fall and Falk back to the 22-yard line, buried after an eight-yard return. And another 55-yard kick from Brian Mormon. Four oh three to go, third quarter, and they're having some fun outside. They're having some fun inside, too, especially the Patriots. 343 yards to 85 for the Buffalo Bills. Bledsoe short set gets it to Givens up to the 24. Let's go to Susie. Um, Mike, Red Sox outfitter Johnny Damon honored before the game. The Patriots won a Super Bowl before your season. What kind of motivation was that? Oh, it's a huge motivation because they uh, showed up to spring or showed up to opening day a couple years ago, throwing out the first pitch, and they showed up again this year. And um, you know those guys inspire us. I mean, they know how to play as a team. And that's exactly what we had to do to win a championship. So uh, uh, coming out here and supporting them, uh, we'll do it any day. We think they're the greatest teams around. And uh, 
they support us, we support them. It's um, New England's a very happy place right now. You know, with so much criticism these days of athletes and selfishness, and you mentioned team, and the Patriots are so much of that. How do you forge that? Well, it, you have to look towards the team because that's exactly what wins you championships. I mean, look at Kurt Schilling going on a broken ankle. Uh, you don't want to see the pictures that he has. Um, you have guys like Orlando Cabrera, Dave Roberts making that big stolen base. And of course we have the big guys, Ortiz and Manny and uh, Mark Bellhorn. I mean, you have to look at this as a team. I mean, it's something very special. Uh, Keith Fall, Pedro, I mean, on and on and on. I mean, there's uh, 15, 16 guys who uh, could be MVP. And uh, that's what makes a great team. So um, I'm very happy of what we accomplished. These fans of New England, they're the absolutely, they're the best. And um, I mean, this is the best place in the world to play. And I mean, they've uh, made me happy. And I know they've made our teammates very happy. And we are very happy that we got to bring a championship to them. Congratulations. Right. Enjoy thank the off season. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Susie, what a postseason for Johnny Damon. Three home runs and nine RBIs in the postseason alone. And he helped lead the Red Sox to that World Series title. Four game sweep over the St. Louis Cardinals. And it wasn't even close. I, I mean, they just kicked him to death. I think his grand slam got it all started. They had a miracle comeback to beat the Yankees. No team had ever been down. 3-0 and done and this is Jonathan Smith on the kick return only Josh Miller to beat and Smith 70 yards for a touchdown Bills you know special teams there's a lot of ways to get back into a ball game well this is one of them this is one of the best ways I mean this play takes about what 10 seconds or 12 seconds to run and you've got Jonathan Smith and runs his punt return back for a touchdown that brings this game back into perspective. The only problem is they have not been able to move the ball at all on offense. They had picked up 85 yards in total offense. That return was for 70 in the touchdown. Now they'll go for two, trying to make it a 23 to eight game. Shelton is the fullback. McGahee goes out as a wide receiver. Now he moves in motion back. Oh, Bledsoe throws on the run incomplete, and a flag is down. And Rodney Harrison there is going to be flagged going low on the quarterback, I believe, is going to be that call. Exactly. You cannot go at the knees of quarterbacks, whether they have the ball or not. Rodney Harrison comes flying in, and he actually, I think he whoa, hits him. Whoa, in the he thigh. hits him with his helmet above the thigh. He does not go below the knees. I think he hits him in the thigh. This is a bad First call. Foul. Roughing the passer, number 37, goes low at the quarterback. After the distance, will bring now, a try. What it, they're going to have to define, the league's going to have to define low. I mean, this hits, watch this. this he's going to hit him in the thigh. That helmet is oh. right in the thigh. That is not at the knees. For goodness sakes, Tom White, what that, are you looking at? That is a great play That's by Rodney Harrison. It's an outstanding play. And it's clean. Sure is. It's flat clean. Wow. Sam Adams is in as an extra blocker. McGahee not going to get in. I'll tell you guys, Willis McGahee is getting, this is 101 running the football against a quality defensive football team. The New England Patriots have found ways to clog up every hole that Willis McGahee has wanted to try and find. 23-6, the Patriots score on the kick return. Rodney Harrison penalized for the low hit on the quarterback. We talked to Bill Belichick earlier this week and asked him, you know, what he values in players. Look at the things he mentioned. Ability isn't on there anywhere. He started with commitment to football, then work ethic. I mean, all of this is the kind of thing you would look for in somebody that works in your office. Intelligence, team attitude. 
And if we'd stayed there long enough, we would have gotten down to athletic ability, speed, height, weight, and all that other stuff. But basically, Bill Belichick is talking about character of a human being rather than what they do physically. Plus, do they love the game of football? Are they committed to play football? Do, is this what you want to do? What kind of work ethic are you going to show up every day and come to work? Those are the things you look for. And are you smart enough to be able to play at this level? This is not a game that dumb people can play. Lindell will kick to Bethel Johnson. Guy with tremendous speed. Johnson all the way back to the one. Spins out of a tackle, still on his feet. Johnson across the 40 and just spun down at the 42. And it took the kicker, Ryan Lindell, to get him. But there's a flag down and holding. We'll wipe out a lot of this big play. Holding, number 30, during the return, 10-yard penalty, your first down. We have all been around this game a long time and listened to coaches talk about what they value the most. And there are a lot of guys who will still tell you we're going to take physical ability over anything else and it's pretty obvious in the way they put a ball club together you got to like the way Belichick does it. yeah you do because most when you, you look at draft day and a guy says well we're going to take the best player available well that isn't the case with this guy he already knows what your talent is now he wants to know what's inside your heart Do you have the heart to play the game the way he wants it played and if you don't don't even show up here see and I also think that he's the type of a coach who thinks outside the box Look at the versatility of his players. He calls it mental versatility. You have to be able to play off. Troy Brown, you have to be able to play offense. Troy Brown says, when they stuck me on the defensive side of the ball, I didn't want to force them to become basic. I wanted them to play the coverages that they played with the complex nature that they played. So he adjusted to it. But Bill Belichick is willing to try and do anything. He's not going to get pigeonholed into just being an offensive team that runs the ball or just throws it outside to everybody. Brady's three-step drop goes outside. Givens makes the catch and is brought down. The other thing that he has been able to do, he has so many linebackers on this team, guys that were down linemen in college, but every team in this league takes guys who are defensive end, who would not be big enough to play down line in the NFL, and makes them linebackers. Why does Bill Belichick seem to have so much more success with them than other people? What? It's a system. And, you know, and, well, and he's, and let me tell you one other thing. He's one of these, he's a coach that you'll never hear, and you'll never hear a player on his team say, you know, we buy into his system. You better buy into it or you're gone. Brady, good protection again. The bomb intended for Patton, and it's knocked away. No flag. Yes, flag now. Wow. And the Buffalo Bill sideline just exploded. Wow. Rashad, Rashad Baker, Baker hit with a flag that came in well after the play could, was over. You couldn't see that five seconds earlier? Well, he might not have been able to get the flag out of his pocket. Well, maybe it's cold. It can't. It can't and it well, takes a while to process the information. Take a look at it. I mean, he is. Pass interference. Number 26 defense. He cut off the receiver. That ain't pass interference. First no. Down. I'm going to tell you right now. Baker makes this is a rookie Rashad Baker makes an outstanding play on the ball he's going up for the ball he's got as much right to that ball as Patton has yeah but I thought that was a know, terrific play you know I don't have a problem but to wait five or six seconds to throw the flag what are you thinking I have a problem with you throwing the flag at all on it that. either is or isn't there comes another flag they're gonna be holding against the New England Patriots now flag day well Tom White and his crew call an average of 18 penalties a game holding number 61 offense to 10 yard penalty remains first down that's now, Stephen Neal the right guard keep in mind that this officiating crew works together and this is the seventh one tonight but they've averaged 18 per game that's just a fact that's just the way it works out they got a whole quarter yet I know but I'm just saying I mean that's you know it, they they have games where guys commit a lot of fouls evidently evidently first and 20 well out of the last three two of them worked back it up to the 36 
Brady with time a little touch on this and wide as lawyer Malloy had coverage on Troy Brown. I'll tell you it, I mean this has been going on all night long but Tom Brady has got to love his offensive line and he's got to take him to dinner this week. Well, it's because, like a rocking chair. Well he I mean he just runs a watch this. Look at the white shirts the penetration. There is none folks. There's none. He's just standing there waiting. Well, you got to understand the big guys up front, Ron Edwards, Pat Williams, Sam Adams, they're not there to rush the passer. Uh, this is great play call. Run play action on first and ten. Keep the big guys on the line. Second and 20. Here comes the blitz. Brady steps up, goes right down the middle, and knocked away in the end zone. And 10 for Givens. And McGee was back there with him. David Givens has had a busy night. Yes, he has. I mean, they've been throwing the ball to him everywhere, down the field, on crossing routes. Well, when you have that much time to throw the ball, why not? He's averaged 17.4 yards a catch. Only coming into this weekend, Ashley Lee up in Denver at 17-7 had more. You see, he got 66 yards tonight. So you figure that out? You went to Notre Dame, didn't you? Yes, I did. So, by the way, so did Dave. A lot of Notre Damers around here. You're, you're in trouble tonight there, Mr. Citadel. No, I'm not. For one of the rare times tonight, they're facing a third and long. Brady dumps it short to Falk. And Falk is drilled as he got to the 27-yard line. Takeo Spikes decleated him. But that will bring up a fourth down and the end of the third quarter. Spikes and Corey Dillon. Both got out of Cincinnati after many years. Escape. They met here tonight and they said, yeah, we'll talk to each other a little bit. Please. End of the what third quarter. Two, Patriots two, 23 three, to six. Four, four, the fourth quarter still to come from New England. The Patriots leading the Bills 23 to six. And Adam Vinatieri, who has already kicked three field goals, is lining up for another try here. Brady and Dillon. Good offensive nights. Tom Brady, 19 out of 32. Dylan, fourth game in a row over 100 yards, 103 so far. And that's a that's a typical night for Tom Brady. Just a solid performance, not the three or four hundred yard numbers. A couple touchdown passes. Vinatieri to match his season's long 45 yards, and is true again, and had plenty of leg on it. 26 6 New England. Why has Tom Brady been able to throw the ball down the field so effectively? If you have enough time, you're able to find people all over the place. You see, this is the ESPN pocket clock. Tom Brady slides, steps up in the pocket, makes the throw down the field in four seconds. Now his offensive line says, well, all right, let's give him right around that same amount. Steps up 3 9 this time. Little now you go straight drop back no play action step up step up there's another one at three nine and the last one little play action fake buy yourself a little more time this one comes out at three eight when you have in the neighborhood of four seconds to throw the football you will find receivers open not only that but you'll be able to spread the ball around five to the running backs three to the tight ends eleven to the wide receivers and he's missed a couple of big shots. To David Gibbons down the field that he's had open. Gibbons and Patton both. Good, solid, steady play. And I think those numbers reflect on the job his offensive line has done tonight protecting him. Those five guys up front have yep. really been special. And anytime you hit 10 different guys, I mean, it says a lot. You know, you're not focused in on one guy. Whoever is open yep. gets the ball. But again, I, I also, it's a combination of the play call. Charlie Weiss has done a Weiss has done a terrific job of spreading the ball, run enough just to get those linebackers thinking run. Terrence McGee from the six and taken down at the 25. Every athlete, especially the successful ones, seemed to be driven. Tom Brady told us what drives him. I'm that sixth round pick. I was, guess I almost feel like the kid who was getting four reps. And I think those those wounds are real deep. You know, that you always feel like there's someone else chasing you and there's someone else right on your heels. And I also realized that I wouldn't, 
you know, if I don't if I don't work hard and I don't prepare, I'm not good. I'm not a good player then. You know, there aren't many guys in professional sports who would admit to that even if they believe it in their own heart. Well, the thing about him, again, I repeat, he was ready to play when Drew Bledsoe went down. There was just no question about it. Bledsoe drops this one off to McGahee. Bruski will make the tackle up at the 38. Let's check in with Susan. Mike, you heard Tom Brady talk about the wounds being so deep. He told me that he can still feel what it's like to go home at night and not have had a chance to get on the field. He said he'll never lose that. And it's a mentality that's shared by a number of his teammates. Troy Brown, who was the eighth round pick in 93. David Givens, a seventh round pick. Joe Andrusi and practically the whole offensive line were late round guys are undrafted. All these guys have a bond. They play with so much heart because they're forever proving all the doubters wrong. Boy, it sure makes the New England personnel department look pretty good, doesn't it? And the coaching system that they have in place. Intercepted. Troy Brown. Troy Brown. Brown. The 22. The third leading all-time receiver for the New England Patriots has his first interception. Well, he almost had one last week yes, against the Rams. He had the ball knocked down. There's, there's Robert Kraft and his wife. They're sitting there. They really appreciate this football team. But I'll tell you what, Troy Brown, it was only a matter of time. Remember what Joe was talking about earlier. In training camp, when he came in, they asked him in the play wide, re or wide receiver and defensive back. He's usually playing in the slot. That is Eric Moles that he was covering, the other number 80. And that's just a lousy throw. I mean, that is that ball is so far behind Eric Moles. Just a bad throw. He got it to 80, all right. The wrong, wrong 80. Ball. I was doing really well until he had to say a lousy throw. I, you were not. <laughs> that was a bad throw. It really was. Corey Dillon on the toss. Aaron ah. Schobel makes the tackle. But that is just a spectacular performance by these guys who are in the secondary. Well, you know, here, here's the pick again. And Joe, you're absolutely right. Look at this, this throw. It was a bad throw. Eric Moles looked like he wasn't even ready to get it. Yeah, you know, it's not like he didn't have time. It's not like there was someone in his face that time. Now, either Eric didn't stop, uh, or Drew didn't Drew didn't expect him to be there. But boy, Troy Brown interception. <laughs> Good play fake by Brady, and just off the hands of Daniel Graham, and Brady was drilled from the blind side by the enormous Sam Adams and he never saw it coming. He may have felt the earth shake. Well, I think you think he got drilled. You think that Daniel Graham didn't get nailed also? Take a look at this throw. Sam Adams just drops Brady, but watch this downfield. You want to see another hit? You want to know why he didn't catch the ball? Watch here. Bang, bang. Two guys hit him. Well, actually one guy hit him. But you know, we've talked about how well New England's played. What a terrific job Sam Adams has done defensively for Buffalo. He's playing his heart out. Throw the ball to Troy Brown. He got it back for you. And now Brady will use a timeout. New England doing everything right, and they're up 26-6. It's all New England, 26-6 with 13-17 to go in the game from beautiful Gillette Stadium. Third and eight for Tom Brady and the Patriots. Blitz coming. Brady intercepted. Nate Clements. Finally, a mistake by the New England Patriots in a 35-yard return for Clements, his second pick of the season. Well, we saw Drew Bledsoe throw one where... Eric Moles was in the area on this one Tom Brady you got to figure that the receiver just decided that he wanted to go in and Tom had hoped that he was going out look at the numbers on Drew Bledsoe only six out of 15 three picks Tom Brady gets his first interception but it's only because Bethel Johnson his wide receiver on the play fell down Bledsoe underneath and that's finally getting a ball to Lee Evans the rookie out of Wisconsin watch number 81 up top he starts in slides out this is what happens when you're a good quarterback who anticipates where your receivers are going to be that's a good tackle by Tom Brady getting them down well, 
Bledsoe underneath again, this time to Molds. And Molds brought down by Rodney Harrison at the 25. Hey, Mike, you know, Drew Bledsoe, when Brown was here and he was here, he right. threw 218 completions to Brown, 12 touchdown passes to Brown. <laughs> Tonight he threw him an interception. <laughs> I don't know if that's a record, but that's good. Did you call it a completion or an interception? The interception. Oh, no. Bledsoe, and this would have been holding. Tully Banta Kane comes in on the blitz and makes the tackle that probably should have been holding, but he got the sack anyway. Boy, he's on the top. Banta Kane, number 48. Take, watch this. I mean, he just beats the, 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 the tackle to the inside and makes the play. He also had a little bit of help from number 59, Roosevelt Colvin. Now he's Tully Banta Kane out of California. He's another one of those guys we talk about who was a defensive end in college, played with his hand down. Now he's playing linebacker for the New England Patriots. Now he's down. He was up before, now he's down. And Bledsoe is going to have to use one of those timeouts. 11.44 to go in the ball game. This was a game the Bills desperately needed at three and five. If they lose this game three and six with Seattle and St. Louis to come in the next two, New England would go to eight and one. Realistic, you, realistically, you look at the rest of their schedule, they've got a real shot, I think, at 14 and two. Which they were at a year ago. Bledsoe off the hands of the rookie Lee Evans. That pass was right there. Now, that, if you're Mike, that pass was catchable. Now, if you're Mike Malarkey, you go. You, I mean, you have down. to. It's, oh. You know, you're definitely in four-down territory. Down 20 with 11:40 left. Man, how many times you see it in the game when, when things are going bad, and then you know you're just trying to get a little bit of a spark. The score's 26 to six. Then you hit the guy right in the hands and he dropped the ball. And you you don't see New England Patriots receivers dropping the ball. And that's your first-round draft choice who's got to make the big contribution. Bledsoe, good strike that time. Was out of but out of bounds. Eric Moles was out of bounds when he caught the ball. And that's Eric Moles' mistake. Exactly. Look at Eric Moles. Now, he, he comes he just not oh. aware of where you are. And there's no reason for him to jump. None. And, All he did was jump out of bounds. And you know what? It's a he is just he's a much better receiver than that. I mean, he is really a quality receiver. He's one of those guys that is a pro bowler. Yeah, well, but he's just totally is, lost his concentration. Yeah, that's exactly what I was say, Mike. When everything's going bad for your entire team all night long, the only thing you got to good about was a punt return. You just lose concentration in the ball game, which you cannot do. Boy, you got to feel sorry for Bledsoe, too, because here's a guy who's been beaten up all night, not throwing the ball well, and he comes back in two straight passes that would have kept this drive alive and kept him in the game, and his teammates let him down. And here comes Corey Dillon, who was hurt earlier. Molds, of course, a multiple pro bowler. Tom Brady has had to develop a different mental philosophy with Corey Dillon as his running back. Uh, now you get to a point now in a game where you start to hand the ball off a little bit more, and if it becomes third and three, you're required to throw the football to pick up the first down. It was a little bit different with Antoine Smith in the backfield. A little more lean towards the throw at that time. Now they just count on Corey Dillon running over people and picking up the first downs. You know, we talked about yards after this guy, after he makes contact. Corey Dillon, watch this. I mean, here, that show will tackle him in the backfield. There's eight yards more. Corey Dillon again. Sam Adams in the backfield. Or Pat Williams, excuse me. There's 70 yards that Corey Dillon has picked up after contact, after one man or two had hit him. Going forward on third and short, and they'll get the first down. Well, who the the name escapes me at the moment. Who was it that told us what you've got a guy like Corey Dillon? You have to want to come up and hit him. I think it was Lawyer Malloy. Yep. You have to want to make the tackle, and it can't matter whether it's he or a smaller guy who you're gonna come up and hit, especially when it's late in the ball game. You have to want to make the tackle.
Dylan again cuts it inside midfield to the 48. See, I, I tell you, I, I just think I don't think you can say enough about the offensive line's job tonight, whether it's pass protection or whether it's run. Look at the right side here. Look at Brandon Gorin. Just really just start number 76. Daniel Graham, number 82, the tight end out front. The holes that he has to cut up inside. Look Stephen look, Neal, the right guard. Do you look at Corey Dillon's eyes? Do you think he's not aware of where he is at all times? We'll talk about wanting to make the tackle. And Lawyer Malloy now has 15 stops. His career high is 16. And he's had a face full of Corey Dillon tonight. And here he comes again. Down to the 43. That was Kevin Falk. You know, interesting running style of Corey Dillon. He carries the ball in his left hand. Tiki Barber is a right-handed carry. Amon Green is a guy who carries it in one hand. Emmett Smith is a guy who carries it in one hand. That's four pretty darn good backs that don't switch the ball. Now, Tiki has solved whatever problems he had putting the ball on the ground. You know, he, give him a lot of credit. There's a guy who studied, said, I can make a change, and he has. And he has been a just a sensation for the New York Giants this year running the football. Ball. I mean, what we're seeing now, Michael, is an awful lot of reaching, arm tackling, and, and people not in position to make a play. But you know what's amazing is we sat and we talked with the Buffalo Bills yesterday, and all the guys we talked to, including the head coach, they, they were just so sure that tonight would be their night. They were well prepared. They had a wonderful week of practice. Drew Bledsoe said, I am really confident. I have never felt this way before about a ball game that we were going to win the ball. Game. Right. And they just laid an egg. Well, evidently, the New England Patrick, uh, Patriots didn't say a word. They felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> they did it quietly. This will be 23 wins in the last 24 games for the New England Patriots, who have now gone over 400 yards in total offense. The last time the Bills gave up 400 yards, two years ago against the Patriots. This is just a tired defense. The oh. Buffalo Bills, we saw the time, we showed the time of possession. It's well over two to one as far as New England's been on the field with their offense. Uh, it, you know, it, all I've seen is our defensive white shirts all night long. The New England Patriots have run 72 plays. This is their 73rd play in this ballgame. Second and two, and there goes Corey Dillon again down to the 15-yard line. You know, the other thing that impresses me is Tom Brady is snapping the ball with about three seconds to go. I mean, use of the clock. Here's your offensive line again, Joseph. Look at those guys. I mean, Corey Dillon is 15 yards downfield before a hand is put on him. Look at this, this move. And finally, then, there's a move downfield that, that makes a tackle, and that was Baker. But... Go ahead. But, it, you know, when, you, when you've got a running back, you're in the fourth quarter, and he's 15 yards downfield before anybody puts a hand on him. You don't have a chance. Oh, we always talk about Peyton Manning being so smart and so aware of everything that's going on in the field. Well, Tom Brady is just the same way. I mean, Brady doesn't miss a thing like you're talking about, Joe. The clock management, the management he's going to make sure he gets that snap off after using the maximum amount of time. Absolutely. Game. And, you know, I want to... I've talked about this offensive line. Matt Light at left tackle. Joe Andrews at left guard. Dan Copen at center. Stephen Neal at right guard. Brandon Gorn stepping in. His first start was against the Steelers. And of course, Charlie Wise there calling the plays. I, I just think it's it's a when the line's blocking like that, and the quarterback's functioning this way, and the running back is is doing it. When you're a coordinator, it's like pick whichever play you want. Falk is in there, fake to him. And then Brady throws incomplete, intended for Brown down at the five-yard line. As sure as the Buffalo Bills were when they came into the meeting with us yesterday, the one thing that they left us with, almost every one of them, we cannot make any mistakes against this football team, the Pats. We can't make. We have to make play mistake-free football in order for us to win. Even though we feel that good about ourselves, we know we're going up against the best team in, in the league right and now. And Drew wasn't able to do that. Mike Malarkey felt like he had a feel for his football team after the fifth game. They went out and won three out of four. Now he has to step back and take a look at where they can work on things on the offensive side of the ball. Third and 14. Falk on delay. 
gets back to the 19 yard line. That was the other thing that we starter. mentioned uh, earlier two Super Bowl MVPs for Tom Brady one Pro Bowl. He doesn't rack up the big numbers and a lot of times you go to the Pro Bowl based on statistics. Adam Vinatieri four field goals a week ago four for four tonight. This would be five out of five. 37 yards on this attempt. His long tonight is 45. This is like an extra point for him. Pretty much. Well, he, I tell you, he is solid. This guy is really a solid player. Hard to imagine anybody with more clutch kicks in his career. And Vinatieri knocks this one through to extend the lead again. Twenty nine six with four forty to go. Vinatieri tees it up at the thirty yard line getting ready to kick it to uh, Terrence McGee a ties a career high tonight with five field goals. His great 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 uncle. Talk about a lucky family was the bandmaster for General Custer and called in <laughs> sick the day of the battle of the little bighorn. Excuse me, General. <laughs> Have a little cold. I'm going to stay behind. <laughs> what a smart guy. Vinatieri, Mr. Clutch against the Raiders in 2001. 45 yard field goal in the playoffs to force overtime. Super Bowl 36. His 48 yarder beat the Rams. Then in Super Bowl 38, 41 yards out, four seconds left to beat the Panthers. When you got a kicker that's ice like that and a quarterback that's ice, you're gonna. Doesn't matter what the score is or where you're going in a game, you can count on these guys to deliver. And 51 other guys are ice. Yeah. <laughs> the rookie quarterback, J.P. Lossman, first round draft choice out of Tulane, has come into the ball game. They need a receiver. He'll have a chance to throw his first NFL pass. Well, they didn't have a receiver on the left hand side of the off on uh, the left hand side of the offense. Remember, no, they had two on the right ball. Well, it's really nice. You got to learn to. You want to. You want to. They don't have know, to be like on either sides. When you, you know, get a game like this, you got you to have a lot of stats. Listen to this. Drives of 50 plus yards. New England five drives. Buffalo none. 10 plus plays in a drive. New England five. Buffalo none. Five plus minutes in a drive. Let me guess. <laughs> five plus minutes. New England. None. Five. Oh, five. New England five. Buffalo. None. Four plus first downs in a drive. New England. Five. New England, five. Buffalo. <laughs> they're all five. I mean. J.P. Lossman was taken by the Bills in the first round. First one since Jim Kelly. Uh, got hurt. Uh, early in the preseason didn't get a chance to play and I think that he is the guy that is the heir apparent to be the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills and it's you know unfortunately the score has gotten away from him but it's an opportunity for this young man his first opportunity to get in and feel the pressure you get hit Lossman is a very talented uh, young man physically just needs some experience uh, he needs some polish too he's a, he's a little bit of a gunslinger came out of Tulane in the first round of the 2004 draft as a senior threw for over 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns and as Joe said the first quarterback taken by the Bills in the first round since Jim Kelly in 1983 that one worked out all right well he's got a gun too I mean he'll he could he can fire it like anything else it's a whole new experience for him Burns on the draw will get up to about the 41 let's go to Susie well, Lossman pretty much saved Greenway football to Lane. They were about to pull the plug on the program, and he really went out. He played great. He brought back a lot of excitement for the program. But, you know, a few weeks ago, we had Craig Krenzel and, and his major, which was, you know, something wild and a great GPA. For Lossman, his major pretty much was football. That's what this kid is all about. But throughout his college career, he really has matured on the field. He's known for his great release, the real playmaker's legs. He's a fiery, confident kid, and he could be the future of this franchise. Well, we'll see if he can get some valuable experience tonight. Teddy Bruski is the injured player, and they are tending to him with 3.51 oh, to go. And certainly we hope that this is nothing 
serious at all for Teddy Bruschi. And this is what happened when you're in a game like this. Number 54 is Teddy Bruschi. Oh, his right, he gets his right leg bent back oh, on, or his right trapped knee. Trapped under him. His right knee looked like it got caught under him. Watch as, he, as it gets fallen. You see the right knee and leg get bent back? Oh. It just doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. You know, you get in a game like this, and the game is all yours, and you got and you and you got to play your players. You just have to. Whew. Good Boy, to see this him. is a good sign here. Yes, sir. Oh, that's great. He'll be a little sore tomorrow. Boy, this is a good guy and a terrific player. They would hate to lose him. And uh, just a look of relief on Brewski's face right now. But you just the body gets into positions in this game that just defy logic. Do you see his? I mean, did you see his body? The way he went out, you, you think, well, yeah. the knee's gone. Yeah. And he gets up and walks off the field. He's you, weren't, at, you weren't made to do that. See, he's looking at the big screen going, see, ow, right there. That's what really hurt. But look at me. I'm okay. <laughs> that amazing? It looks like Dean Kane. with a super. Yes, he does. Yep. Vrabel coming on the blitz. Here goes Lostman trying to run. Fumbles the football. New England has it. Jonas Jennings is holding in the backfield. He's holding Vrabel number 50, so that'll that'll be New England's ball. Jonas Jennings is number 75. Vrabel is 50. And Roman Pfeiffer's got the ball. Uh, on the left-hand side, just take a look at it. Last one just step upside, but here is Jonas Jennings holding Vrabel right there. That's where the call, or they got him in the face mask. One of the two, but he had, had a piece holding. of him. Number 75. Penalty is declined take the result of the play first down first thing that JP's going to have to figure out hold on to the ball is that these guys come after the ball and if you got the ball you're going to attract a crowd and the thing that you really want to try and do is get it out of your hands you don't want to start running around that worked in college but not that way but it doesn't work here that's right yeah not when you're running with no, it no. you want to get it out of your hands to one of your guys that's right 331 to go and all they'll do is work on the clock right now Dylan behind Brady and while we have the chance I want to congratulate my colleagues Paul this past week was in Buffalo to accept the uh, Ralph Wilson Award as this is Corey Dillon breaking a couple of tackles down to the 33 and that was for community service and service to the Bills earlier this summer Joe Theismann inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Congratulations. to both my buddies. Well done, well done. Well, and here's the guy. You talk about well done. How about this guy? I mean, after contact, this guy has got 100 yards after contact. I'll tell you, there's somebody else that's important. Jimmy J. Wells, who's a lieutenant colonel with the United States Army, is in the 172nd Corps in support group over at Camp Anaconda in Iraq. And... Uh, we all appreciate you guys over there and want to thank you for everything. All of those guys. Of course, we had, you know, we at ESPN, we had our our sports center go over and spend time in Baghdad for the troops. And boy, did they appreciate what they did. It was. It was <clears throat> warming up for what could be a sixth field goal and that's the smile we saw in Corey Dillon Friday when we met with the team because we had done several games when he was with uh, Cincinnati and he never smiled that way when we talked to him there that he only said I wanted to come here and play for somebody where I had a chance to win we have reached the two minute warning and the Buffalo Bills down 23 to the Pats Stay tuned for Sports Center. Steve Levy and Carl Ravitt standing by. We'll have a little triple overtime treat for you. Peyton scoring drive and Boomer's top 10 plays. All of that coming up on Sports Center. That set. Did you see that set on Sports That's Center? Pretty. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Rohan Davey is the new quarterback. The third year man out of LSU getting his uh, chance to throw a first pass of the year. Here was what the starters had done. Bledsoe, eight out of 19, 76 yards and three picks. Yikes. 
Brady, 19 out of 35, 233 yards and two scores. That's what Brady does, though, week in and week out. You're, you're right about it. I mean, it, there's, there's no way that it's so right, you look right? at his numbers. He's not Pro Bowl numbers, but yet he, he, he doesn't care about that. He's a Pro Bowl player. Yeah, he's a Pro Bowl player. Yes, he's he is. Pro Bowl numbers. But I'll tell you what he is. He's the most valuable player in every Super Bowl. Rabi Abdullah on the toss. Trying to be patient, picks up a couple. McGahey and Dillon, the feature running backs. And Corey Dillon certainly gets the best of that with 151. McGahey held the 37 yards, only 2.6 yards a carry. Coming in, he had three 100-yard games. Yep. I just want to say something at the beginning of the, of, of the show. Uh, in the opening, Joe had uh, Bledsoe and McGahee, oh, okay. and I had. <laughs> oh man, I, I had we were gonna Brady do that. and Corey Dillon. All right, okay. it's a great choice on my part. Right. I'm taking Brett next week. Okay, <laughs> I'm taking Brett Favre in next week's game. All right. Okay. I want Brett Favre in every game. All right, who won the Sunday Stud competition? Was it Bettis with 103 yards? Marshall Falk with 139. Joe Horn 167 receiving. How about Peyton Manning, 320 and five touchdowns. He ought to win it. 76.7% of you, more than 50,000 voted. And Peyton Manning, I don't know how many times he's won it, but he's in it virtually every week. And Dan Marino all at once is looking at seeing a record that many thought would never disappear disappear not even the, the last game of the season is anybody throwing 31 70 touchdowns in the 31 <laughs> touchdown passes and we're at the halfway point of the season frightening and they're not slowing down no well, what, they, what they did do is play some pretty good defense excuse me Just not, not too many people have had the chance to say that this year <laughs> but they did Yes, they did. And the Colts played very well today. And they don't have to play great defense with that offense. All I got to do is play a little bit. And we get to see the Houston Texans next week. Get the Packers the great, down there in Houston. And the great Favre. David Carr isn't bad either. No, he isn't. I tell you, the, the young man is, is uh, what a future. E, Andre a Johnson. Oh. One of the most dynamic young receivers in the game. Second and five. And that is picked. I don't know where he was trying to throw that, but Lossman threw it right at Tully Banta Kane. Well, Tully Banta Kane was wide open. Well, this he was, was three a, feet from him. He was three feet from him, but he was wide open. Take a look at this. I don't know what he's looking at or who he's trying to throw the ball to, but look at that. He had his arms out. He waved, and Lossman threw, threw it right to him. Lossman, I mean, that was a nice throw. Well, if it wasn't him, it was Dexter Reed, number 42, who might have got it. Maybe, maybe he thought Dexter Reed was being covered. I have never seen anyone with a shorter interception. <laughs> that was point blank throw and catch. I know. If he didn't catch it, they're giving him a concussion. Well, a disappointing trip to New England again for the Buffalo Bills. And Bill Belichick, who has put together such a magnificent organization here in New England wins his 23rd out of 24 games. The final score 29 6 New England. Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next for Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, and our entire ESPN crew. The hardest working in the game. This is Mike Patrick saying good night from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.
you can count on. Battle with the Bills, more like a blowout. Tom Brady and the Patriots demolish Buffalo in a game you saw right here on Channel 5. Good evening, everyone. The defending Super Bowl champs continue to pick up steam. That they do. The overmatched Bills never really had a chance in this one. Sports Center 5's Mike Lynch has our postgame coverage live at Gillette Stadium. Mike. Hi, Bob. Hi, Pam. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a very happy Gillette Stadium as the Patriots just continue to roll over opponents. It doesn't matter the weather. It doesn't matter the opponent. It doesn't matter the time of day. The Patriots winners tonight by a score of 29-6 to to run their record in the season to a very impressive 8-1. Before the game, a number of members of the Red Sox were here. Johnny Damon looked like he wanted to play some football tonight. And one of the highlights, Chris Schilling, comes out and gets out of a golf cart on crutches after his recent ankle surgery. And the beat just went on. Corey Dillon, who ran for more than 100 yards tonight, rips off this 30-yard run early in the game. That's set up an Adam Venateri field goal. Drew Bledsoe intercepted twice in the first half alone, this time by Eugene Wilson. And the Patriots would go on a drive of 91 yards and score another field goal. Tom Brady to David Patton. This bullet puts the Patriots on top 13-0 in the second quarter. And before the half was out, Drew Bledsoe would be intercepted again, this time by Teddy Bruschi right over the middle. And watch Bruschi make like a wide receiver himself, breaking tackles left and right, crosses midfield, deep down into Buffalo territory, a 29-yard return down to the 27-yard line of the Buffalo Bills, where Tom Brady capped off the drive with a strike to Christian Fourier, and it was 20 to nothing Patriots at the half. Buffalo was never in this game at all. Final tonight, Patriots 29 and the Buffalo Bills 6. Mike Dowling's out on the field. He's in the locker room. We'll have some reaction from the Patriots when we come back in sports. We'll see you in about 15 minutes or so. Pam Bob. All right, thanks, Mike. Coming up, the Patriot division rivals, the Jets, suffered a heartbreaking defeat in overtime. We've got the highlights of that game and the rest of the NFL action with Mike Lynch later in Sports Center 5. Live with Mike Lynch. This is Sports Center 5 Sunday. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Gillette Stadium. The place is empty now, but a little bit earlier it was rowdy and it was noisy, and it was all Patriots as they wrote the Buffalo Bills again 29 6 the final, and the Patriots run their record on the year to a very impressive 8 and 1. This game was all Patriots. Buffalo never threatened the Patriots at all. Corey Dillon ran for more than 100 yards, rips off a 30 yard run in the first quarter. That set up one of five Adam Vinatieri field goals on the evening. Vinatieri from 27 yards out, and he is just perfect down the middle. It's a 3-0 Patriots lead. Drew Bledsoe intercepted three times tonight, twice in the first half. This one deep in Patriots territory by safety Eugene Wilson. Patriots had drives in the first half of 91 yards, 81 yards, 75 yards, and 27 yards. This pass from Brady to Bethel Johnson, good for 47 yards all the way to the Buffalo 26-yard line. And then Brady would cap off the drive with a touchdown pass to David Patton from 13 yards out. And the Patriots had themselves a 13-0 lead with just under four minutes to go until halftime. The Patriots weren't finished, though. Next interception off Drew Bledsoe by his former teammate. This time it is Teddy Bruschi. Intercepts it just shy of midfield and then just rambles. 29 yards all the way down to the Buffalo 27-yard line. And Brady would cap off the drive again. This time he would find one of his tight ends, Christian Fourier. At the half, the Patriots led it 20-0. Want to play something for you that Mike Dowling said in the pregame show, and it was prophetic. Listen. Troy Brown will again play in the de defensive backfield. Now, will this confuse Drew Bledsoe even more? Because remember, Drew Bledsoe completed 230 passes in his career and 13 touchdowns to Troy Brown. And guess what happened? Bledsoe driving, throws it over the middle, and Troy Brown, number 80, his former teammate, intercepts him. How about that? What a night for Troy Brown. Patriots win it 29-6. Here's Teddy Bruschi in the locker room. Uh, number one, first and foremost, always stop the run. We felt they had a they had a legitimate threat in McGahee because you know he's he's a little bit different than than, than Travis Henry was, and so uh, you know we hadn't played against him as a, as a full time running back, you know yet. So uh, we were really focused on him and stopping him because he can do different things. You saw him bounce out and and cut it back a little bit more than Travis does, and uh, you know so we we were anxious to, to to show that show that we could be successful versus him, uh, and then uh, you know getting pressure. All right, before the game. 
The theme of championships continue. The Patriots have two Super Bowls. We all know about that. And before the game, John Henry, Theo Epstein came out with the World Series championship trophy to a thunderous ovation for the 68,000 people that were here. Red Sox manager Terry Francona on the field. And then Johnny Damon came running out. Damon looked like he wanted to play football tonight. He was pretty pumped up. And the star of the show, Kurt Schilling, out of the hospital a few days with that ankle surgery. They brought him out in the golf cart. He's wearing Tom Brady's jersey, number 12. Gets out of the golf cart to join his teammates. And they all went upstairs to a luxury box, and they were part of the festivities here tonight. Great night here at Gillette Stadium as the Patriots congratulated the Red Sox, and the Red Sox, of course, have congratulated the Patriots twice on their opening day. All right, let's take a trip around the National Football League. Some great highlights to show you today. Let's start with the St. Louis Rams playing against the Seattle Seahawks. Well, let's start with the Jets first. <laughs> Curtis Martin rambles in, and he is in from nine yards out, his second touchdown of the day, and it's a 14-0 Jets lead but the Ravens would come back on this touchdown pass and lead by a score of 17 to 14. The Jets had a little problem managing the clock and they had to settle for a field goal with seven seconds to go to tie it at 17 all. And they go to overtime and Matt Stover hits from 42 yards out giving the Ravens a 20 to 17 win over the Jets which helps the Patriots. The Jets slip to six and three. The Patriots are now at eight and one. All right, now we can go to that St. Louis Seattle game this afternoon. Watch this hit over the middle. That is just nasty. Terrell Barea just levels Torrey Holt. And a vicious, vicious hit. Holt came up, didn't know where he was. He came back into the game. Let's go to Tennessee. R.W. McWhorters of the Chicago Bears. He's going to return this punt 75 yards for a touchdown. But he probably ran 175 yards. He's just zigged and zagged all the way across the field and finally go in. This game was tied at 17 all. And watch how this game ended. The game ended on a safety. Can you believe that? A safety. It's only the second time in NFL history that a game has ended in overtime on a safety. All right, let's go. Jacksonville and Detroit. David Gerard is a the quarterback. They're in overtime. He looks 30-yard touchdown pass, and it is good. And the Jags beat the Lions. 23-17 the final. All right, Pittsburgh Steelers and Cleveland Brown. This is William Green. <laughs> Joe Brown before the game. This game hasn't even started yet. Both players ejected before the game even started. I thought the National Hockey League was on strike. <laughs> Here's your winning play of the game. Jeff Garcia is stripped. Ball bounces right into the hands and he's gone. Fumble recovery, touchdown, 24-10. Steelers win. They, like the Patriots, are 8-1 in the season. Colts, Texans, Peyton Manning, five touchdown passes this afternoon. This one to Brandon Stokely. 31 touchdown passes on the year now for Peyton Manning. And next Monday night, the Patriots will play the Kansas City Chiefs. They play today against the New Orleans Saints down in the Dome. Aaron Brooks to Joey Horn. And the Saints went over the Chiefs 27 to 20. You know the Chiefs will be a little bit hungry come next Monday night when the Patriots play them on Monday Night Football, which of course is right here on Channel 5. We'll take a time out right now, come back with more. We'll tell you about BC's latest ranking in the national polls. That and more when Sports Center 5 Sunday continues live from Gillette Stadium.